Well, a very good morning and a very warm welcome to the opening day of competition at this year's Paris uh, Grand Slam. It's a very uh, special occasion because it's the 50th um, hosting of this event. And to tell you about that and to talk about who it is that we should be looking out uh, today, it's my pleasure to welcome Neil Adams. Good morning, Neil. Yeah, good morning, Sheldon. Wow, what a tournament. And um, it's, it's an amazing atmosphere, isn't it? And for, for the first time, uh, we've actually got uh, people coming in. And uh, we didn't have that, did we? In Albia, just recently at the Junior World Championships, we had nobody in there. Olympic Games, the same. Here, we've got uh, um, uh, people actually coming, spectators uh, coming in, and it's going to make it am an amazing uh, atmosphere here in Bercy. And um, as always, the French just so keen about it. 50th anniversary, I think it's one of the biggest events uh, on the judo calendar other than the World and Olympic Championships. One of the most difficult uh, ones to get a medal in, you know, and to, to place in. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to it. We've got the Paris tournament again. They're going to hold it in February. So we've got two very, very close together, which is very unusual. I'm glad about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love coming here. Um, it is, as Neil says, one of the uh, premier events on the International Judo Federation World Tour. So just as well that we're going to get a second. And hopefully by the time we come round to February, I think it's going to be. Uh, yeah. There'll be a little bit more relaxed nature because and there I were th queues think, of people yeah, outside I think, today. Yeah, queues of people, you know, and you don't see that very often, do you? For judo events yeah. where they're just queuing up around the corner and, uh, you know, uh, actually being um, guided in. And, uh, they're, they're, I mean, this place is just filling up now. By the time we get to the finals, a little bit later on, uh, it's going to be immense. And uh, not quite as many people as normal, but we've still got some class acts. Yeah, I think what we're going to see is instead of round one and round two, round three sometimes at the Paris Grand Slam, you know, some unknowns, we're going to get straight to the meat of uh, the, the matter. And we can, we can start actually by uh, telling you that there are four mats. You can choose whichever of the mats you want to watch. If you, uh, if you stay with the commentated channel, then you'll get Neil and myself, Loretta Cusack-Dor and Annette Byrne because there are, that's our commentary team for this weekend. So if you want to go with the commentated channel, we will be going through um, different uh, weight categories. And the weight categories today will be under 48, under 52, under 57 and under 63 for the women. And for the men, it is the under 60, under 66 and the under 73 kilo categories. Let's start by taking a look um, at the under 48 kilo category. Neil, pick out who it is that you think we should be looking at there. Well, we've got Bukli there and interesting to see Koga uh, back in there. And uh, I'll just... Uh, <coughs> Put my glasses on for this. Uh, uh, down the bottom part, we've got Costa, very and uh, Nikolic, uh, very experienced. Clement is down there on the bottom half as well. So uh, yeah, I mean, it, I think this whole tournament's going to be loaded for the French. But uh, and, and they said to me before they came in, great opportunity for them to put their juniors out and their number twos and, and to really try their squad. Okay, that's the under 48 kilo category. The under 52 kilo category. Uh, under 52s, Neto is up there, Takeda uh, of, of Japan, that's going to be a first round match. Uh, Bishrelt is down there uh, and just looking down now, Primo, under 52s, yeah, she's in the third pool there and right the way down there's a couple of Germans in there, uh, 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 Belgium and German in there and uh, Netherlands as well, Van Crevel is down the bottom so should be an interesting one I think it'll start at the top there that's an interesting first round and down in Pool D the uh, current junior world champion from uh, Albia Chloe de Victor of France that'd be someone that the French will be hoping to do something under 57 kilo category Lipatiliani uh, is one of the up and coming isn't she of the uh, uh, of the um, Georgian team there against Legentil, uh, uh, Legentil. And uh, Primo's up there on that top half as well, as well as the Japanese, Funakoba. And then the bottom half, you've got Pereira of uh, Brazil, and you've got, uh, of course, France. You know, their whole squad's going to be in this anyway. Tough one uh, for uh, Karim 
Primo, Primo, a cadet who won the Cadet Europeans, won the Junior Europeans, and then a silver medal at the Junior World Championships, thrown in here, and oddly enough, drawn in round two against Faisal Mokda, who's also a junior from uh, France. So we'll see uh, how that goes. Right, the under 63 kilo category. 63s, uh, Krasikova uh, is up there of Austria. Uh, she's a top seed. We've got Bold in uh, Group 2 there. Uh, uh, Lucy Renschel, uh, great chance for her to do well in a Grand Slam there. I think uh, that's in Pool 3. And uh, down the bottom there, you got Van der Berg yeah. of uh, the Netherlands. I think uh, that should be interesting. And she's got Valkova there mm. to get another that. another tough one right yep. the under 60 kilo category no uh, Nagayama Ryuju he was originally uh, inscribed but withdrew so the number one seed now is Tonika Takadawa of the Netherlands who else have you had a look at here uh, Takadawa I think is one of the uh, you know one of the hardest in the category but uh, you've got the whole of the French squad of course in there Lopez is going to be up there as well Abdelayev there down the bottom uh, for me, uh, uh, also a big threat. And then you had mentioned earlier on about, about Koga Genki. Yes, interesting, isn't it? Uh, and uh, it's uh, Koga's son who's, who's actually here, and uh, he's um, still got to develop, I think, hasn't he? They've been putting him out for a couple uh, of uh, events. I think this will be the toughest one that he's had so far. OK, in the under 66 kilo category then. 66, of course, Veru on good form at the moment. Uh, for me, he's probably the favourite, uh, and he likes this tournament as well, does well in this one. Tomelkov down there, Lima. Uh, we've got uh, Perez Roman. Don't uh, uh, write him off because he's down the bottom there, and he could get all the way through, I think. Really unlucky for the junior world bronze medalist from France, Maxime Gobert, who in round one is drawn against Tanaka Ryomo of uh, Japan. And then Yago Abuladze uh, has moved up from 60 to 66, and that could uh, be interesting. 73 kilo category, that is the weight category that we're going to be taking a look at. The number one seed is Sen Ocher Sog uh, Batar, but we're going to take a look at the opening contest, which is on mat number three. It features Hashimoto Tsuichi of Japan. He's up against Adebavo Olympio of Togo. Hashimoto in the white jidogi, Olympio in blue. Sit back and enjoy the action. Well, what a great start this is then. Hashimoto up uh, in the under 73s. It wasn't really a difficult uh, decision for us to make as to where to go first of all. And uh, well, the crowd are already up for it as well. I can tell you it's the first time that we've had crowd background, which is great. Uh, we didn't have it at the Olympic Games, didn't have it at Junior World Championships, uh, but we've now got it. So it's Hashimoto against... I think we've got a problem with the camera. Yeah, the, we've got three. the Russian in. Yeah, so what we're going to do is have a look at Yevgeny Prokopchuk up against Guillaume Daddy of the Ivory Coast. And when we get the camera working on uh, three, yeah. then we'll come to it. I mean, it would be better if we just went to three, oh, and to two, actually. And when we get it sorted, you know, thanks very much. Nope, we've got it now. Here we are. Uh, we're on mat number three. So Hashimoto just following it to ground straight away. Just goes um, to show that some of these um, top fighters, because everybody's uh, starting to discover their techniques and uh, to block them out that uh, they're having to uh, do other things as well Hashimoto though will pile the pressure on he'll want a, f a, a big throw and a big hip on here just to set this one alight it's a bit harsh wasn't it yeah I mean difficult isn't it when I mean, somebody's he, he, attacking you and he blocked it so easily yeah. but he did block it Anyway, Yevgeny Racklin, the referee, immediately 
Yeah, it's going to be a, yeah. it's a Wazari for that one there. And uh, opens up the account here, Hashimoto. So first technique up. Kind of an Ashi Garuma, I think it was. So turns it into the hold down, just needs to hold down for 10 seconds. 10 seconds will pass quite quickly. I don't think Hashimoto will be that bothered how he wins by Ippon, and uh, it's not, let's get the big score, is it? He's just, uh, let's get the job done. Workman-like performance. Yeah, I mean, we were talking with the coach from the Israeli team about selecting competitions to attend on the understanding that you were going to get a number of matches. And he said, sometimes you just want numbers. You can't get the kind of training that you want at competitive um, outings that you want at home. And you want them out in the middle. So if you can go to a competition where you're going to get four or five um, matches, um, it's sometimes just as good because they're out in the middle. They're actually competing. Absolutely. Well, it's all about mat time, isn't it? And, uh, yeah. That's what they say about the the rest uh, the uh, boxes, isn't it? You know, they need rounds. They need to do the rounds, and and uh, the analogy for the marathon runners, you know, they need the miles in. Coming up next, Ayub El Idrisi of Qatar goes up against Denis Iyatsev of Russia. It'll be El Idrisi in the white jadogi, Iyatsev in blue. Yes, the first tournament we've seen. <coughs> A lot of the uh, top top names, isn't it? I mean, we did uh, we did actually a couple of weeks ago in Zagreb. We had one or two of them uh, out there. Slightly uh, higher quality here. First time we've seen Ayatsev. Well, you've got a couple left before the end of the year, Abu Dhabi and Baku, and you wouldn't want to miss preparation for those two. So it's, it's a little bit difficult referring to Paris, to the Paris Grand Slam as, as the warm-up, yeah, but, and then I tried to come to the I, you know. Straight on. onto the arm, and he gets the submission there. He was hunting that, wasn't he? He was just, he was just going for it there. Elder Issy mm. didn't stand a chance. The arm was out. Absolutely became the hunter there. So hopefully we can get it back in slow motion. Just have a look how he uh, hunted that. The good Newaza people become hunters. Uh, they know what they want. He knew exactly what he wanted there. Oh, okay, okay. Well, you're, ha you're happy doing it? Well, doesn't look... Uh, so we'll sort it out uh, so that uh, we have quick replays and uh, that we're able to... Have a look at the action again. So this next match up then we'll stay on this mat just for now, just so we can uh, just feel our feet a little bit and didn't take uh, long, did it? No, it didn't. He was he was the hunter there and yeah. I'm just saying that uh, we'll just uh, stay on here just till we uh, yeah, get a few of the blips absolutely. gone and we're able to uh, have a look at uh, some of the replays as well. Martin Hojak of Slovenia, uh, goes up against Theo Rican of France. Hojak in the white jadogi, Rican in blue. And it's the first time at the Grand Slam for the referee in the middle as well, from Australia. Good luck with that one. <laughs> It's yes. just as nerve-wracking for them, isn't it? Wow, well, are you kidding out there? You know, and is, this is the first time we've had uh, the, the buzz of the crowd as well, yeah, isn't yeah. it? So, uh, it's his birthday today oh, is as it? well. <laughs> it's all happening. Happy birthday. <laughs> it's all happening. Many happy returns. I'll tell you what, it's a birthday you won't forget. What's happened to... Um, we've got... Rican, there's Hojak. And you've got to be careful because you know they're pretty sharp with just putting the clock on if you don't make an appearance. 
I'm not surprised they haven't done that yet. Well, they will do any second now. They'll put a 30-second clock on this, and then uh, that'll be it. I've seen an athlete in white wandering down now, Martin Hoja, no coach. So it's possible that he may have had to have his judogi changed at the last minute, and that's why there was a delay. Because there is no coach. So yeah. we'll, we'll have a look when we see the back number. So it's up to the coach and the fighter. Uh, so the coach can't come out if he had to change his judogi. Probably the reason why. Yeah, there you go. He's got one of our geese on. So IJF. Well, we had a, a special seminar yesterday with the referees, which happens at every event now. Uh, so they're on the tatami going through some of the situations with the kumakata and uh, possible edge play some of the tactics that will happen things to look out for and i think uh, great great idea shoulder yeah i um, was privileged to be there i mean i've been to a couple uh, before and enjoyed them but really they're essential to get a proper understanding of how things are how things are done, how things are interpreted. Well, we were saying, weren't we, it's not just, uh, it's, it's inter interpretation of the rules, giving it chance to develop and going for positive, uh, positivity, you know, so if you think there's a chance of it developing into a throw or a chance of it developing into a newaza position, then you leave it, you know, you just give it chance. Hoshak just taking his time to tidy things up. He's ready to get underway now, get to grips with Rikan, who tries that low. Oh, that was nice. Yeah. Wow, he was really deep there, wasn't he? He really was. Walked onto that. Yeah, beautiful drop, seeing Aggie right the way between. Are we able to do some uh, replays, guys? Uh, just. just we are, we're going to have the replays in a bit, uh, it, as soon as... Uh, like I say, they've just got to iron out a few technicalities and then we'll have the replays. Who hands on it? <laughs> he is, indeed he is. We left, we left Freddie at home this week, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Wow, what a seeing Aggie that was from Requin. On an experienced fighter as well. They were saying yesterday that uh, what a great time this is for, for French. So they can put on uh, all their squad. And uh, now he's got to attack Hojak. He gets a Shido there for passivity. Just patting him off. There's the Sienagi again. Oh, and he went again then. He nearly climbed on that. Bent over. He's not happy with what he's seen there. It can't be. He's only given him one a few seconds ago, the passivity penalty. Well, this is one of the things that we're, you know, we're dealing with yesterday, if you remember. Uh, we're, you know, in, in the seminar, just saying that uh, just get, leave it a little while, no, give no them one time said anything, to build though. up. No, they should. Uh, I'm maybe. going to go and have a look at that and see just how, <laughs> how long it was in between the penalties. I'm, I'm interested in that. I'm genuinely interested. Well, look at this. Uh, well, yeah. I was going to say done that... Him again. Uh, yeah, he did him again, but uh, I don't know. I'm not so sure about the uh, direction. I, I don't think he got the direction. No, he didn't. He's, he's had it taken off. So just a little bit too, too keen there to give the uh, second was Ari. It's got to be absolute direction, any kind of counter, and then you've got to make sure that you use your tewaza and your, your uh, control of the hands to take them flat on the back. He's running away now, minute 13 to go. Two penalties up there to Hojak as well. Doesn't need to change this, Riquen because uh, he has uh, really dominated this match. 
into the last minute. Right, just as a guide, what is the time, if you know, that a passivity penalty can be given in between one and the next? Well, this is the thing, is, is that the first one, we normally go around about 40 seconds, you know, give them time to settle. And then around about 30 seconds after that, you know. But 14 seconds. Yeah, I know. 14 seconds. He got penalised. Oh, Kosoto, that was close. Sorry, that just... No, but I mean, hopefully they're, they're going to talk to him anyway about getting well, the timings right. If, you know, if they don't, <laughs> you know no, I they, will. No, they will. They will for sure. I'm going to get kicked out of here soon. <laughs> I just can't, I can't believe it. <laughs> well, like I say, you know, normally for the first one, <laughs> it's uh, it's a, around about 40 seconds. You know, when they give it too quickly before the 30. Mm. So he gets a second penalty there, the Got Frenchman. Go now. Yeah. And Hojak still in this match. Oh, Ooh. look at that. He's in danger here Lock of going with down. The right arm. Rican. Three seconds to go. Rican blocked him out with that right arm. He's away from the referee, he didn't see it, but he's got two colleagues there. For me, he just snuck past this one despite the fact that he had the positive score. Yeah. Well, Hojak came unstuck there, and there was uh, a couple of situations there that were, uh, yeah, a little bit uh, dubious. I think um, speed of the, one of the Shido's there shouldn't have been, but... I'm sure that will be sorted out. We'll stay on this then with uh, Hussein against Hamad. There's uh, quite a few. The, uh, in fact, it's only 73 kilos uh, being played on all, all four mats at the moment. Uh, just looking up now uh, at um, possible. Let's uh, see if we can go to uh, mat number one. All right, let's have a look on mat number one, where we've got Valiev of Azerbaijan uh, up against Lima, David Lima of Brazil. So you can, at home, you can go from mat number one up to mat number four. Uh, if you uh, want to uh, see a particular match, you can come back to the commentary then with uh, Sheldon and I whenever you want. There we are. We've just lost that now. Her Valiev there just battles his way through there. But it gives us, uh, to, uh, uh, gives us an opportunity to see Shane of France up against Al Bali. And Al Bali is in blue. Well, we haven't had that for a while. The, the uh, difficulty hearing ourselves speak with the crowd in the background. How good is that? He has some good technique, Shane. There's the Uchimata. And he's going to score straight away. Uchimata for Wazari. Joan Benjamin Gabba of France has won his contest on mat number two against Salvador Casas Roja of Spain. This is like a, a French national squad fest, isn't it? It's, uh, they've got everybody out there, some of the juniors as well. And it's, it's all over. 
All over. Shane with a second Uchimata there. Albali didn't stand a chance. Second one was a clean upon. Well, it's not very often. Uh, we, we see Shane beaten quite conclusively by Ono, don't we? But uh, there's not many that can uh, do, do what Ono does to him. But uh, there he was with an Uchi matter of his own there. Beautiful stuff. Right, coming on to man number one now. Gabriel Juto of Canada faces Vaza Marc Velashvili of Georgia. It's Juto in the white jadogi, Marc Velashvili in blue. Well, it's oh. all over. It's, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. That's unfortunate. Georgia not feeling up to it, I suppose. We're just uh, we're Sheldon and I just looking here just to see what the interesting uh, match is just about to come up. Let's go and have a look on uh, mat number two here, Crostomo uh, and Harada. Uh, again, it's 73 kilos uh, category. Crisostomo, Portugal then in white here. Harada of Japan in blue. Looks like a young Japanese fighter. We haven't seen him before. Just going to have a look uh, at it, look up a bit of his history here. As always, the uh, Japanese, such wonderful stance. Looking for the Sumageish. Out of Newaza, though. Right arm over the back, looking for the Uchimata. Yeah, Harada hasn't been sent out much by the Japanese. 2017, he went to the Asian Championships, the Junior Asian Championships, and picked up a bronze medal. And then he fought in the Osaka Grand Slam in 2019, and he placed fifth. So that's it. That's the, the background that we've got on him. 23 years old, Harada Kenshi. Left against right stance and uh, finding it difficult to catch that sleeve here. Now, good change of direction there from Harada. Interesting, we got three Japanese in 73 kilos. Well, I don't think we can. <laughs> They're only allowed to. <laughs> well, the, but there is. Fujisaka is uh, down there and uh, against Ab uh, uh, Abuladze. That, that is in the under 66 kilo category. Sorry. Ah, right. And then that one, yeah. Tanaka. I wonder. So, sorry, I mate. How we're going to do that? <laughs> Did get me uh, thinking. Harada and Hashimoto are in there. I was looking at the uh, yeah, weight yeah. category. Uh, they, they've changed it. Yeah. They changed it behind your back. They did. They did that. Yeah. Caught me out. Well, Chris Ostomo will have to 
do something about attacking himself here. It's all Harada at the moment. Great atmosphere already here in the stadium. And the people are still arriving. I'm wondering whether they will uh, have a, a cap, the amount of people. They're still up there, up in the, in, the, uh, in the rafters there. Doesn't look like it, does it? No, it doesn't. Maybe we will get a nice full house this weekend. I was watching, I think I told you, I was watching a, a, a college football game the last week, Oklahoma and Texas, and it was 77,000 people in this stadium, not a mask in sight. It's incredible, isn't it? You can't, you can't believe that, that, uh, that, that, that that was allowed to happen. So look at them pecking away at that sleeve there, and it's uh, one of the biggest problems in in judo at the moment is uh, left against right, right against left, and uh, that opposite stance. If you can't catch the sleeve, what do you do? So into golden score for this match. I think the first one we've seen. Zostomo doing everything right here. Um, what about we have a look at the uh, 66 there, Abuladze against uh, Fujisaka of Japan. Yeah, Fuji, uh, Fujisaka has scored Wazari uh, in that contest. That's on the adjoining mat. They've got two and a half minutes left to go. Yago Abuladze moved up from 60 to 66. Not sure if he's going to stay there, but... Well, this one looks uh, over now, so let's go to mat number three, uh, if we can, please. Uh, just uh, have a little look at this uh, 66 kilo uh, category. Uh, just Abeladze against uh, Fujisaka of Japan. Musari up, and this will be the first time that uh, we've seen 66 kilos category. Well, we're looking at the current world champion at under 60 kilos, the world number one, Yago Aboladze, making an appearance for the first time at uh, 66 kilos. First time we've seen him since the world championships as well. He beat Usman Kyrgyzbaev of Kazakhstan in that final, if you remember. Takes them a little while sometimes, doesn't it, to, a, to adapt here. Fujisaka is all over him like a rat. Now looking for the Shimiwaza. Can he, uh, is over the face, obviously. The referee right on top of that. Such an unusual uh, uh, style, hasn't he, Abeladze? Yeah. Or oh, very awkward. Oh, God, so awkward. Now, this might be it. Reverse uh, oh, here. He just lo oh, he he loves this he one. Yet. Absolutely. This is his favorite technique here. This was his go-to yeah. technique in the World Championships as well. And now the Japanese in all sorts of trouble here. He's just managed <laughs> to turn out here. He's going to go again here, Abeladze. Watch again. He's, he's going to go again. He's not finished yeah. with this yet. And he's going to be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that wasn't far off. He gets a Wazari for it. Yeah. Managed to, uh, to equal it all up. Fujisaka 
I guarantee you he's not going there again. No, he won't go near it, will he's he? He's seen that and he's thought, what was that? <laughs> what was that? Yago Abeladze almost catching the Russian for Ippon. Only ending up with Wazari. He had another bash at it, didn't he? Yeah, it was, uh, it's like I say, go to technique. I think they're checking to see how many seconds here. Didn't quite get it. Oh, it must, be, must have been so close. It must have been so close. Probably, well, nine and a half seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't get it. That's unfortunate. That would yeah. have leveled things up nicely to keep it, keep it going. There he comes again. Oh, he's going to go again. Looking for the Sumageishi. Yeah. And definitely uh, Fujisaka is... On the back foot. Yeah, <laughs> on the back foot and running away. He's holding on now, isn't he? He just looks so awkward. He's changed from that attacking, attractive upright stance to just backing off and holding on. 20 odd seconds left to go. This is going away from him. Abuladze yeah. here in his higher weight category, not finding this easy at all. Seconds left to go. Last roll of the dice for Abuladze. No time to work. His knee was a magic either. No, not enough time now, that's for sure. Uh, done. Right, well, after a few more words from Neil Adams, it will be Loretta Kusak Doyle. So there are four of us are actually here for the uh, for the commentary over this next two days. So uh, you'll have us uh, all complimenting each other and uh, working together. So big hello to uh, Loretta, Kusak Doyle, and uh, Loretta. We get the chance to work together if we can hear each other. I know it's an amazing atmosphere, isn't it? Unbelievable, isn't it? I'm just. I mean, it's, um, it's one of those special places, isn't it, that uh, it's the only time you can't hear yourself speak, which is a miracle for us, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's definitely a place that you say we're coming home again because the, the atmosphere here in this stadium is unbelievable and the, the amount of knowledge that these spectators have is um, second to none, isn't it, really? It is, it's absolutely second to none, and they're still coming in as well. Up to the rafters they are. We're going to go on to mat number one. Uh, let's have a look at Tanaka of Japan in white here, up against Gobert of France in the under 66 kilos category. If we do go from one to another, it's only because we see an interesting little matchup and we're just, uh, we're just going to fly there. So uh, there's some diff uh, great matches, first round matches coming up. Uh, there's been actually a lot of excitement already. And the, the, we've had a couple of French athletes come out, so this is what the crowd on quite a little bit here, really. So it's, it's great to that atmosphere. The interesting thing is, is that um, the, the French said yesterday, because you were there, I think, when he said it, he said that uh, gives us a chance to put some of our young uh, French fighters out. Gobert was in the... Uh, in the uh, Junior World Championships. He had a disastrous, uh, not a disastrous, but not a very good uh, individual, but then was part of the winning team uh, combination. And uh, Sheldon had a little word with him. He was one of the athletes that Sheldon had a word with. And uh, their dream was to fight in the Paris tournament. And there they are. They have so much pride in terms of competing and, and uh, 
Um, it, it, they actually raised their game, really, to the atmosphere here and the support that they get from this crowd, from family members, and just within the sort of judo communities from where they come from. But this is a great opportunity, isn't it, for all the countries that are participating in the next sort of couple of months, because it will just sort of iron out the, the athletes that are really going to be those that are going to be targeted for the Olympic Games, which is really only on the doorstep, three years away. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's not like uh, we've got four years now uh, for it all to go. We've only got three years, which means that this time next year, it's Olympic qualification. All the points get halved, and then it's all about gaining as many points as you can. But these Grand Slams are, 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 are massive points, and especially this one. Can you imagine there's not so many of the top fighters here, not as many as normal anyway. And uh, so it gives the French time to put their whole national squad in and Def experiment a bit. Well, when you think about it, in February, this is a great opportunity for the French to capitalize on it. They've got a, another Grand Slam in February, so it's only months away, really. So they've got a double whammy here, really, to build up this core team that's going to be sort of pushing forward. Tanaka driving for the Newaza as well. I've noticed that all of the uh, Japanese that we've seen so far uh, just going from Tachiwaza down to Newaza. Plenty of time to do that. But uh, Tanaka finding the young French fighter quite difficult. Yeah, definitely. Robo's giving him a run for his money out here, isn't he? He's, um a little bit cagey at times, but you can see a lot more work from Tanaka. He came in with that C and Aggie and obviously broke the balance there. But um, as you can see, the Frenchman goes down into Niwaz and he looks pretty confident down there. As you can see, the legs wrapping up there nicely, creating a little bit of problem there for Tanaka. He'll be very uncomfortable in that position, if anything. The whole crowd were lamping onto that there. Uh, asking him for more power, but uh, it wasn't quite to be. Two Shido's up there for Tanaka. One more and it'll be all over. So Gobert got a good chance here going through to round two. Well, Gobert looks to be towering over him, but he's now, as this contest has gone on, he's, his confidence seems to be building up. And uh, I think he really believes he's got a chance here in this golden score. Can't ride those, that's for sure. Those sea and aggies. A little bit dangerous there, really. Well, as soon as they between the legs there, you just got to kill it dead, haven't you? So Gobert gets a, a second Shido as well. Two Shidos apiece. Well, a mistake from either one of them now could um, forfeit this match and a place in the second round. Right. And again, right the way between the legs, so close. He's playing a very dangerous game, isn't he, and allowing Tanaka to come in with that Sianagi. Riding one of them is just a very, it's very tricky and dangerous indeed. I think uh, he's got to get on the pace a little bit here, Gobert. He's being out attacked and he's probably an, an attack away, if not now, for the third Shido. One attack away. Has to be a full uh, recognition from the top table. The supervisors have got to agree for the third Shido because it would mean Hon Sokomaki disqualification. Well, since Goberg got that, third, that second Shido, his confidence seems to not be so <laughs> up there really against Tanaka. And again putting another strong attack in it was convincing enough yeah i think since he's experienced a couple of those cn aggies as well you know they're they're uh, life-changing some of those aren't they yeah. oh, lovely as she was there from tanaka that's got to be it, surely, because uh, he can't. He's first in every single time here, at Tanaka. I'm really surprised that uh, 
That's again, that's another technique. Uh, Gobert hasn't done anything. Surely the third Shido is coming. Gobert starting to look very frustrated out there, isn't he? Yeah, he's just being beaten to the attack every time, isn't he? Oh, nice little bit of transition, but and all oh, those legs are tied up there. Nice. Oh, he's on the arm here. He's on the arm. Now then, can he get the? Uh, can he get it? It might be on there. It might be on. This is his last chance. Now, this is a situation, Loretta, where he might get up here and get his third Shido because they don't, they're do not they not counting the attacks in Newaza, which I think is uh, it's crazy that uh, we don't do that. Totally agree with you there, Neil. Totally agree. It is, isn't because it? it is so skillful to work in Newaza. Yeah. The number two, next contest, first round for men under 66 Kilo. Gobo is very dangerous in the Niwa zone, we've just seen that. But... Not enough change of direction there, shut up. The referee will be over, overturned there, absolutely overturned. You know, and this shows just a little bit of lack of uh, experience for the referees coming in. It's got to be absolutely directed backwards. Third Shido comes though, and that's all over. Tanaka wins by default, but uh, not uh, because of the uh, change of direction. Well, it was definitely an interesting match there. There was um, some strengths from both of these athletes. Obviously, Tanaka was a, a lot more livelier in the Tachiwaza, but there were some dangerous moments there for Tanaka in the Niwaza. You saw him just at that latter stage. Yes, so shall we stay on this one now? We're just looking around. If you see something interesting there that you want to have a look at uh, at any time, uh, Loretta, just say that. Nothing really coming up, so let's just stay on this map then. We've got uh, Barbara Timo of Portugal up here against Inbal Shemesh of Israel. This is the under 63 kilos category for ladies. Nice attack there from Timo, straight out. Drops in Aggie there, takes her onto a side then, gets the Wazari. She was very cold, didn't she? She wasn't expecting that in the opening seconds of this contest. Really needs to wake up a little bit there. Once some more, there's Timo straight in with that Sianagi. Well, there's no messing about there. She really does mean business. Caught a cold there. Shemesh never, never got going. And uh, it's unusual to see that with the Israelis Definitely. now. Definitely. Massive surprise there. So 63 kilos on the first three mats, mat one, two, and three. 148 kilos happening at the moment on mat number four. Uh, let's stay on this one, though. Uh, Sarah Gordon of the USA up against Agatha uh, Devitri of France. So under 63 kilos category, and gives us a chance to have a look at Sarah Gordon. It's a very strong weight category, this 63s is always uh, well attended with some very strong athletes participating here in this Grand Slam. So it'll be interesting to see what the outcome at the end of the day will be. But I think we're up for a lot of nice matches coming up. That big right arm there of the uh, French. Did you used to fight the, uh, find the French awkward? Yes, I always found them very extreme with their grip and one-sided and draw you in. And especially being slightly shorter than the average athlete in my weight category, I felt that was, my head was getting pulled down. So I had to really sort of keep my distance and try and work off that sleeve to avoid getting caught. Like what we've just seen there with a the high collar, it was always frustrating for me. 
It's funny how it never changes, uh, how uh, from decade to decade, it's still the same stance, isn't it, from the French? It looks like the same. I mean, it could well, go, you could go back 25 years and it's still the same. I still see that. And, and it's very powerful there, as you can see. The high collar grip, the elbow tucks in really nice, which really locks it into position. And that's where it becomes very dangerous for their opponent. In trouble here, Golden needs to get out of there, needs to stand up. did well. This will be the biggest tournament that she's ever been in, Sarah Golden. What a tournament. And look at the crowd now, right the way up to the rafters already. <laughs> Goodness knows what it's going to be like tonight it's, for the final block. Isn't it just wonderful, though, to see the crowds back? And it does make such a difference, especially for these athletes. Well, I think for everybody, I, I think one or two of the referees are having a bit of an epi out there as well. It's just some of the first time they've uh, refereed a major tournament, certainly one like this. Well, Sarah Golden here, she's um, struggling with the very strong gripping style of the French athlete. And, um, but she's got a lot of energy there. She just needs that break, I think. But uh, the lack of experience most probably is um, what's causing a, an issue here and knowing how to pace herself in this contest. She finds herself once more in that knee waza, which is always a dangerous position to be in. Every second that she's out there, Sarah Gordon, it, this is good experiences. It's a tight match. There's no Shido's on the board. They're both attacking, which is always good to see. Strong fight off the grips, though. We were dealing with that yesterday with the uh, referees, saying how difficult it is when they're pinning. But look for the ones that pin. That was close, wasn't it? That there, Sada Makakomi. Well, that was one of the best attacks there from Sada, and she is sort of settled in. I just love her energy out there. She really is giving it 100%. She is really working hard against a very tough opponent who's got a very strong gripping style. And when those grips are uh, sort of laid up there, it's very difficult to work with, isn't it? She had an opportunity. She's taken that opportunity. And um, so hopefully that will give her a boost of confidence as this match goes on. Still no penalties on the board, and that's always uh, a good indicator that they're attacking at the right time. Again, she, Sarah takes second place on the gripping. She's out gripped once more and tries to rescue herself with what looked to be a bit of an Uchimata into a Makakomi, but um, uh, very loose on the grips and once more finds herself in that knee was a predicament. Looking for the Sangaku there, but it uh, doesn't look as if it's really got any direction or power there. Two more mats uh, are fighting at 63 kilos, mat two and three. Uh, mat number four there, they were on uh, 48 kilograms. Gerges of uh, Netherlands there up against uh, Bulgakova of Russia. Once again, French athlete, very strong, but very defensive there from Sarah Golden. She's got to be careful on that. Yeah, that big left hand is sticking into the hip, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, surprised that she hasn't been pulled with it, really. What's refreshing here is that both athletes have really been battling away in this first quarter. And we're into Golden Storm for no penalties, which is quite nice to see. Um, it's been very interesting. It's the, the overwhelming gripping style of the French that's causing Sarah a few problems. But Sarah has had a couple of opportunities there, but one very strong on Makagomi, but um, she is putting in, but it's, she's rescuing herself all the time. 
it doesn't seem so that she's able to set it up with a good gripping style, having full control, and then putting her attack in. It just really is a rescue every time she comes in. Yeah, it's taking initiative, isn't it? And hitting first, so uh, she's got to attack first if she can. Oh, there it is. Ashigaruma in the end there, and Dimitri of France took, uh, well, 34 seconds into Golden's score to do that, and it was very even up to there. Sarah Golden did very, very well to keep her out. In the end, it was an attack on the edge. With Dimitri, she just, she changed direction. Instead of taking it forward or back, she, went, she actually took those long limbs, stretched over across, and took her off to the side. Just that slight change. Well, again, uh, as we said before, we will try and uh, get the, um, the slow motion. So uh, they're, they're really working hard at it at the moment, just trying to get it sorted. Here we go. Here's the Ashigaruma. And it was off to the side, wasn't it? There, yes. started inside there. And uh, yeah, it just takes her off to the side. First proper real attack there. And uh, here we are in the under 60 kilos category here, Genki. Uh, Koga Genki here up against Believ of Russia. And this is uh, the great Koga's son. I know, he's, yeah. he's had some great performances. I've seen him on the circuit a couple of times now and I'm quite impressed. And, and, and what a name to live up to though as well. A lot of pressure isn't there on this young athlete. Yeah, it, I mean, every time he steps out there, he's expected to do something. To be like his you know, father, To be it? like his dad. Very big shoes to fill, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And uh, a, a tough first round match as well here. Bliev of uh, Russia. Look at that. Absolutely, just exactly what we were talking about yesterday, about pinning the sleeve. Definitely, yeah. I mean, total and absolute. Pinning the sleeve there to try and uh, stop the Sienaghi of Koga. Gonna look for the Uchimata here as well. Again, it's a little bit of a settling process with the, the grips, isn't it? The Koga coming in with Sutemi was her attack there. Not sure whether it was trying to get out of trouble. I think he felt a little bit of pressure in the corner. Very oh, good. now then, did he score on that? That wasn't far off, actually. It had two parts to it, so he probably won't get the score for it. But uh, Bleyev was very close there. Just that little bit too much open and light, wasn't it? Yeah. It needed a bit more sort of but it had two, control. Like I say, just hit once and then went again, didn't it? That was a definitely a... Uh, it was close, wasn't it? Was it? Very, very close. <laughs> I think it was the, the first initial entry was very slow and open and very soft, but the finishing touch to that was quite powerful and controlled. Well, I think the uh, the main thing was, was it all part of one movement? That's it, you know, was there the, that yeah. sort of pause in between? Wow, good match. Good one to open up with. Good for us anyway, not for them. Well, definitely a challenging one for both athletes. Nice throw there with that left arm round the back from the Russian. Yeah, good change of direction as well. Trying to throw him over the other flank. Now up to Koga. Doesn't look too confident in going down there in the Niwaza, does he? I don't think he saw an opportunity. No, I was saying that, um, you know, the, the, the ones that want the Niwaza, we saw it, it's a of uh, Isaiah of Russia, 73 kilos, hunted for the Juji Gatami, just literally hunted for it, you know, and uh, I think that's the difference when yes. they hunt for it. Strong attack there from Koga, got his opponent down, and just didn't have the little finishing flip over at the end. But 
Shiro goes to Russia. So that's the, the little warning to say, right, we've got to step it up a pace or two. palm over the back that looked it looked very dangerous indeed just didn't manage to get the grip did he threw it in there though well talk about op opposing styles here you've got two different styles uh, the the very russian big arm over the back and and uh, the um, different techniques from different angles and of course, Koga, he's looking for the ideal opportunity to do one of his Sienagis or Uchi matters, but uh, not quite having, you know, his own way, is he? Well, not in any means, by any means. Saying that, that was the best one, wasn't it? Almost went onto his head there, didn't exactly. he? We talked about that yesterday we as well. About that definitely, and that, um, that was very close, to be honest. But again, that was uh, one of the few chances. <laughs> It was a close one. Little tilt, the ear did hit the ground, so there was that slight tilt of the head from Koga, but it was a great opportunity there for him. His problem is he's taking second best on the grip. He's always second to get over it. He's taking what he can get left, but because the Russian is in there first each time. But the Russian has two Shidos on the board, and they're now going into golden score, so. It's not a comfortable position for the Russian to be in. No, it's not. It's not uh, not comfortable, and he can't make any more mistakes. Otherwise, it's finished. And it's a bit of a shame because that big arm has been coming over. He's been initiating a lot of the attacks, and yet here he is with the two penalties. Now, can he get the uh, Sangaku turnover? He might just get it here. It looks promising, there's no doubt about that, and he's working away at that arm as well. Legs uh, trapped at the moment. Now, can he get, uh, oh, just manages to turn there. But he's in the old side, Komi here. Koga is gonna hold him. Yeah, all oh, that definitely was a nice finish. And um, although the, the legs were a little bit messy and loose there, he was tying up that arm and that was the winning ingredient. Again, it's down to the transition. How important is the Newaza? I mean, he was uh, actually dominating, not dominating, but he was ahead, wasn't he? Blayev, from a Tachiwaza point of view, but uh, loses it on the ground. Well, we can hear oohs and ahs coming from all over the place all in here. Just different things happening on each of the mats. And that's what's quite interesting because there is having this audience here is obviously creating a lot more atmosphere and we're actually blind to knowing what's happening. We can only see the mat in front of us. Yeah. And um, there's a lot more action, but it's the, the tension yeah. that's being created here in this stadium here this morning. Let's go to mat number two, uh, where we've got Sender Chur, the number one seed in the under 73 kilos category. Olympic medalist Sender Chur, and uh, he's up against uh, uh, the Russian Prokopchuk of uh, the uh, Russian Republic. And uh, it's a hard old match going on here. Sender Chur on the best form of his life, though. Straight away, the Russian comes up with that high collar grip, drawing down on the head of the, the Mongolian. Didn't look comfortable there, and you can see once more, a little bit of defensive arm there on the, the rib cage. You've got to be careful with that. He's a good fighter, Prokopchik, uh, but uh, here he's got his work cut out against uh, Sendature. Like I say, he's on good form at the moment, but uh, what a fight here for the early rounds. We're going to see this fight out, and then uh, Annette Byrne is going to come in and take over from me with Loretta. And uh, so, but we'll play this one out, Loretta. Just saw him a couple of weeks ago, uh, the Russian. 
Strong fighter. Well, as you expected, it was going, always going to be a very tough match between these two athletes. And there's definitely nothing that's going to divide them at this particular moment. One and a half minutes remaining in the contest. And it's really about who can actually secure the stronger Kumikata to then be able to accelerate further on. And neither one of them are actually ma ma maintaining a good, strong grip. I'd say 73s, strong, strong category here today. Hashimoto already shown he means business. But uh, there's quite a few. Wow. My knee was screaming then when he took him back like that. Yes, my hips were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was definitely one of those ouch moments, wasn't it? Yeah, referee yeah. wants to have a little look there just to see whether it was against the spirit of, I think. But uh, the uh, supervisors, I think that's what he's uh, stopped it for. The only thing I can think of is the way he took him back. Yeah. I think he took him back in the, right over the, the joints itself. I think they'll just carry it on. So Sender Chur gets uh, Hon Sokomaki there for taking him backwards against the spirit of judo. And uh, he absolutely, beside himself, doesn't understand what's going on. Well, well, I'm sure have another look at that a little bit later on. But uh, anyway, Sender Chur is out. Uh, I'm going to hand over to uh, Annette Byrne. She's going to come in, just take over. And I'm going to be back in about uh, another half an hour. I'll see you yes, in a bit. See you in a bit. Right, yeah, well, for, that was a very disappointing one for the, the Mongolian. And when he reflects and looks back on that contest, you can see really what happened. And here we have some of the replay. As you can see, directly pulled it back over the ankles, knees, and the arching of the back. It was definitely, as we say, an ouch moment. Very uncomfortable. And, um, but was very lucky not to be seriously injured on that one, but um, that's the reason the hands off your Oh, it's lovely to have you in, net. Greta, uh, hello, welcome to everybody. Yeah. So now we're on this, we'll stay with this mat, and because again, it's uh, another interesting one that's coming up here in Skaba of uh, France in the white, and Harada of Japan in blue. It's already a very nice atmosphere here, as oh, we are we used were, to. We were to talking have. about that earlier on. Yes. Huh? The, the atmosphere is special. amazing here. And what makes it so special, this crowd is so knowledgeable as well. And although we're just watching one match, um, we're hearing so many oohs and ahs that we're thinking, what are we missing <laughs> out on? Is yes. there something exciting that we want to see? Because this crowd is so excitable. It just feels like um, judo's coming home, isn't yes, it? We're really yeah. seeing a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. It's Paris been a challenging, challenging time yeah. for these yeah. athletes. And, um, and it's been heartbreaking for our spectators as well, because they will have missed this. Yes. <laughs> hmm. So, a minute is gone. Interesting to see another name, Diguchi, but it is the sister, Kelly yes. Diguchi, on mat number one, not Krista. <laughs> well, good strong left, high collar grip there from Gabor France. He's controlling quite nicely, keeps the other hand loose, yeah. leaving his options open here. And um, you, you sort of sense that there's that Sienagi, but as well as the coach Kosota to just try and open up his opponent. But he comes across there for a, a, a attempt of a Makakomi, but he left himself a little bit loose there, didn't he? Yes. Now he's looking for a possibility on the ground. But good defense here from, from the French. Yeah, he 
can turn him, but he can't finish it. Yeah. He needs, uh, needs to tidy it. up a little bit. Yeah. Well, we're coming to the halfway match, so that warming up sort of period is over and done with, and uh, they really should have a sort of a good idea of the capabilities of their opponent, and that this is where the, the action plan starts coming into fruition. Yes, yeah. um, hopefully they have done the had the game plan. But again, once more, it's up. Um, Gaba, he's got very good, strong grip there, isn't he? He's yes. Again, here they work on the ground. The attempt to, I mean, he, he turned him already, but to hold him to finish it up in front of Sekomi. It's and like the touchy was versus the knee was here, isn't it? Yes. Oh, first penalty now. For a French fighter. Gabba trying to maintain that grip in the inside lapel. Um, seems to be his, his life in the control that he requires. Yeah. Oh, a bit of a stumble there. Yeah. And um, sadly, the Chinese really didn't capitalize on that. He had a yes. great opportunity into the Niwaza and um, just didn't see that one coming quick enough. Yeah, lost an opportunity there. It was Absolutely. a great chance there yeah. for, for Japan. Christian Aggie. Again, a nice rotation in the through the transition into the Niwaza. Interesting, Harada, Kenshi. I mean, this is a good example. We're going to see another upcoming uh, generation. And, uh, we have some junior world champions here taking part and uh, here in Paris. And for example, Harada became third at the Asian Championships. I mean, these are well, still juniors, but uh, the junior level is coming up now. And uh, it's a good mix also in the next year, I think, when some, some favorites from, from a category who maybe take some time still and um, after the Olympics who who take, yeah, some take some time to recover, to refresh and build up. And uh, when they come back next year for all the events, for the big events. And that, that's always a nice mix to see the youngsters against the experienced. Well, some of these youngsters have been knocking on the door for a long, long time, haven't yes. they? It's yes. like, give me a chance, let me in. And when you've got what's, well, which we have, it's, it's a high quality of athletes that we have seen for the past four years and building up, five really, and building up to the last Olympic Games. Yes. And now we've only got the three year gap, haven't we? So there has to be that quick changeover if yes. there's going to be. It is not and many time. They've Much got time. to throw them in here. They've got to give them that opportunity and to see really what comes out of the mix. Exactly. And and we are in a good place here because it will be in Paris, um, the next Olympics. And as you said, not much time is, is there until uh, the next Games, a year less. I think France has been very, very clever, though. They've got this Paris Grand Slam here, yeah. October, and in February next year, another Grand Slam mm -hmm. in Paris. Yes, you're so right. Very, very close to each other. So, yeah. And for as part of an education, trying to throw in as many of the athletes into the mix to see really what's going to happen yeah. in preparation maybe for the next Grand Slam in Paris again, home advantage, and gives them the opportunity once more to identify in building up for that team yeah. literally two years after that. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's a very clever move for France, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> They've been Obviously, no one could plan that um, COVID was going to happen, but yeah. throughout the whole sort of disastrous times that and challenging times that these athletes have had to face, um, this is an opportunity for France to get this right, isn't it? Yeah. So, already golden score. But um, 
even no off score. The, yeah. I think the athletes here have, have the, they've actually stepped up their game, especially some of the, the, the French athletes, these young ones that we're seeing for the first time, are actually putting on a really good performance. They're all hungry here. They're all wanting the limelight. And um, it's accelerated with the, the support that this crowd has given them. Yeah. And we can't forget the success that France got at the Olympic Games. Yes. Olympic team champions. That was so amazing. That was yeah. like the icing on the cake. Not only yeah. did they get Olympic champions, but they actually got the, the little topping at the end, mm -hmm. didn't they, taking the gold medal. <laughs> yes. So here we are, oh, lovely Uchimata, beautifully executed. Scoring a Wazari. Nice rotation of the head, continued yeah. to pull through. Almost, although the contact was really on, on the on the lower arm, exactly. not a head in, involved or something like that. He was able to throw him and decided a match. I've got a was a pawn on that one, so goes through to the next round. No, I don't know whether you want to just stay with this mat. It was again another strong. Yep. Dennis Vieru. Davia. He's up against Robin Corrado of France. Didn't Dennis win the, um, gold in the last Grand Slam, was it? Vero is always one of these that's knocking on the door, is always on the either podium or just very, very close to it. He's always a strong contender in this weight category. I think Corrado, isn't he a European, junior European medalist, is he? I believe just, oh, he was um, European junior champion in 2000. Definitely Corrado, young junior athlete that's had a, a bronze medal last year in the European Success. Championships. Is this Veru? Veru, yes. Yep. So three minutes remaining in this contest. Oh, both are given a good run. And here. a year oh. earlier, bronze at a World Championship. So. Well, you would say on paper that um, Veru is most probably the stronger out here of these two athletes, but um, Corrado, for me, is a strong young athlete coming through, and with this crab behind him, I think it's got to give him a certain edge here. Yep. It's one of those situations, everything to gain, nothing to lose, isn't it? Yeah. Veru being very defensive in the gripping. Needs to as well grip up, use it. At the moment, is it's a bit more of a defense. Corrado looking busy, but really hasn't had the opportunity to create a space for him to maneuver through and pass the, the strong grip. He's come over the top this time, though, but he's left himself a little bit vulnerable. Yeah. With that Kojigari, as you've seen Veru attempting, He's trying to draw down on the head of Veru here. Veru is here number one seed. He got a bye. Corrado already had one, already uh, had had a fight. So sometimes this is a little advantage. Yes, definitely. The back, you need that little warm-up period, yeah. don't you? Yeah. And obviously Veru hasn't had that. Outside, oh, beautiful what? combination. Fantastic. Maybe we're going to have a replay of that one. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. <laughs> and they also need a replay, not to make any mistake. If it was a score or not, yeah. It was also my impression. He landed on the... Yeah, the elbow was outside and landed on his front side. 
beautiful combination. A little bit more, more pour on that sleeve and pulling it, yeah, in the sleeve. shoulder in would have would helped. Absolutely, and it would have been a Vasari. So a minute to go. No score so far. Checking again, but his left arm is there under the under the belt. Yep. Well, he grab, well that's what they say. Grab. Mm -hmm. There's a shido then be given to Rado. That belongs already to Nelek. So either the belt or above the belt <laughs> is allowed. <laughs> Well, Corrado looks, he looks to be in trouble there. He's really yeah. looking towards that ankle and it doesn't seem, he doesn't seem happy with it. Corrado trying to step the pace up, but again, that offensive arm there, you can see the right one on that lapel, controlling nicely as he now follows through into the Niwaza. Good transition, but sadly missed the opportunity coming deep under the arm there for the Sangaku turn and um, lost a little bit of control at the end. But uh, sharp reactions, but um, placing of the legs technically wasn't so good. Yeah. But Corrado looks, and he looks in bother here. He's, you can see he's limping slightly on that right leg and has been troubled by it for the past, as you can see again once more, that limp. We're into golden score now. There's um, Shido yep. a piece on the board for both athletes for very different reasons. But Ferru, for me, just seems to have built a bit more confidence here, and he's got that warming up period now yeah. out of the way. He, as we said earlier on, he said uh, earlier on in it that he had a bye in the first round. So, as we all know, that it's always nice to get your first contest out of the way before you get you come against somebody that's going to really trouble yes, you. Exactly. <laughs> so, good grip here from the French fighter, but. He can't really use that for a dangerous attack. But it should motivate you when you know, okay, one last attack with a score, one last score, and then it's over. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I think that's the competitiveness in a... Well, what we're going to do, we're going to, this seems to be that it's going to be a little bit of stalemate. So we could yes. nicely move across to the mat number three, where we can see Hashimoto, which is a really key contest here. Hashimoto and Otsiev of Russia. Now, <laughs> this is not a nice one, Dad, yes. is it? And the Russian Either leads. Athletes. Yes, and he's leading Iyatsev. So that will, it's still going to be really exciting. Hashimoto in the number two seat in the 73 kilo category. Both had a fight before. And now it's Hashimoto against Iyatsev here in round two. Yeah. That is a good one. Well, Artsiev is one of those more, well, both of these are very experienced athletes. And uh, that's me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's definitely a contest that will keep us on the edge of our seats because um, although Artsiev is in a really good, comfortable position with a minute and 28 seconds to go, yeah. um, you could write off Hashimoto. The only thing with Hashimoto sometimes, he, he gets a little bit frustrated with himself yeah. and a, a bit of an attitude comes in with that rather than staying focused and on his game. And that could most probably be to the advantage of Utsiev. Yeah. Utsiev there picks up a Shiro. Oh, no. 
penalty One. for Hashimoto, I think, for stepping out or leaving the, the mat. Asiev steps across there. He yeah. looks for that He's big, very right. tall, long legs and very awkward shape, isn't he? Yes, but, um, absolutely. I think that causes Hashimoto the difficulties. Hashimoto backing him up there to the edge of the contest area, which puts Asiev in a lot... It, 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 he doesn't have the room to maneuver, so yeah. he puts him in a very disadvantaged position. Yeah. And, and there's only either one way, two ways, going out where you get pick up a penalty, mm -hmm. which means that would be two on the board, even more pressure. Yeah. Or you come and ride possibly the Sienagi or Siotoji from Hashimoto. And um, sometimes you think the, the worst of picking up the penalty most probably is the better solution on that. But yeah. ideal for the Russian is to stay close. Beautiful wow. combination Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Absolutely brilliant exchange there. Definitely a score. That was a good moment for the contra. Let's see if it was a score. If but the referee was obviously side. on the other side, so he's double checking there. Yes. But uh, for what we quickly saw there was definitely a score but Hashimoto he's wanting to get back in there he doesn't want any time to look at any video play on that one and I wouldn't blame him because I think this is going to be this could possibly be the, the score that will give Arziev the win Dennis is standing there he doesn't look like he wants to even he's, and yeah. I think he thinks he's going to even have to continue on there I think he knows but I know you know what I like this point we got the possibility to check it immediately make no mistake you know sometimes in the, in the very Definitely. past yeah they did they checked it carefully and decided this so it it, it, it it's just right, you know. It is. It's perfect, isn't it? We saw it, but we could have missed something because it was so quick. For this replay and to be able to identify what actually did happen, was it actually yeah, well? Straight away, we thought it was. Yeah. But we have to make sure because it's a real crucial match against two yeah. very strong opponents, and Hashimoto is out. Yes. Wow. Headline, right? <laughs> So, let's have a look. We could also have a look down to mat number four with Walid Kia to see the French fighter. That's a, a match now, this contest without any scores. So, everything is completely open here. His opponent, Ibrahim Aliyev of Azerbaijan. Less than two minutes to go. Aliyev is one of these athletes I really do rate. I think he's a very strong opponent. Um, dynamic, yeah. very explosive, very dangerous. Yeah. But the experience of the Frenchman on home soil, he just has to have his wits about him in this contest. There's no doubt about it. He can't take his eye off this contest at all, the Frenchman. Yeah. Well, this was something that were the referees were discussing last night, and that and that was really interesting to Absolutely. to hear about the rules and the interpretation of rules and what's classed as pushing out, what's classed as being defensive, what's classed as being a, a hand sokimaki. And um, yeah, definitely interesting from my point of view, and I'm sure you agree that Absolutely. Uh, it gave us a true understanding. Yeah. And it was it was led by um, the sort of head of the refereeing commission and for, for Daniel Lasko to really, so that all referees are on the same page when it comes to making these decisions. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And very often, we, they also spoke about, have a look at the intention. What was oh! is the intention? No, that was, that was That's amazing. what I say about yeah. Eliev. He is so dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. He got round that waist. He was on that and he lifted with using the knee to accelerate. He just didn't get the turn on it. But yeah. my goodness Everybody me. Everybody want to see it. 
maybe again. There. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Good reaction there from the Aseri fighter. She it was a 50 50. Turned it? him, yes. That's a good fight. Yes, it, it's starting to really warm up now. Yeah. And, and to finish that, you know, the attention is very often so important to see, to realize, yeah? And uh, also the situation on the scoreboard, and not only to open your, your book with uh, the rules and say, okay, I just saw this, bam, bam, and then give the... the is to have that <laughs> the solid shadows. interpretation yeah. of it. special feeling also, yeah? And, and really, it's a lot of the time what they were saying yesterday is you watch a match and you can tell if it's intentional by the body language. Yeah. And purely by the body language. You don't have to look at the textbook. Yes, if someone walks off the mat, but it's how did they walk off the mat? Yeah. And the intention, did they deliberately step out? Or was that person really driving with the blocked arms, yes. with the extended legs, driving their opponent off the mat to get that third and final shido? Yeah. And that's where you read the whole contest and interpret what that rule should mean. Exactly. Well, this has turned into being quite a feisty match. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> and um, a bit of excitement here. There's no doubt about it. Two Shidos to one. Aliyev really has to stay totally engaged. I wouldn't like to see this going to a third and final Shido, but I think it's just done. So, sadly, decided, yes. He's out, but uh, for the French crowd, the Frenchman goes through and Taya gets an opportunity to show what he's worth. What do you think, Loretta? On mat number two, we're going to have the number one seed from Austria against the German. Not because I'm German, but it is the under 63 kilo category and it's the number one seed here. Um, we're going to have Magdalena Krasakova of Austria. I think it'd be interesting to let's switch across to some of the female competitors. What, but that is not... <laughs> what's where we that are this is this uh, we're somebody at. else? The Japanese? Maybe this is another mat? Yes, this is mat number three we're on at the yeah. moment. don't know what's happening. Well, this looks very weird, doesn't it? We're going to solve that problem and, yeah, and uh, until we're going to watch, continue that one until we're going to solve that technical problem. Ah, I'm going to see that uh, we already see the names, but of course, at the moment, they are cleaning the mat. That's right. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, we, did, we didn't see that <laughs> from our uh, point of uh, view, but then we're going to stay with this fight. Yeah. This is the difficulty that we, ha yes. we face here. We've got one screen that will show the match that we're going to be covering, yeah. um, but we, we can't see what's happening on the other mats. Absolutely. And as soon as there's some action, then we'll, we'll swiftly move across yes. to um, mat number two. Yeah. Until then, we've got Lima of Brazil in white and Kuzaka of Japan in the blue. Exactly. Yeah, of course, they clean the mat from time to time. That's and, it. But we didn't see that. We just saw the graphics. But that's not a problem. <laughs> we find it out. <laughs> so Fujisaka there in a more comfortable position is um, his opponent Lima with uh, one Shiro. And we've got a minute and 47 seconds remaining in this contest. And that's quite an interesting uh, contest because yeah. the Brazilian is junior world champion from 2019. So just before this COVID came in as well. Yes, so it, it's exactly. Yeah. Well, he's, he's doing extreme. The pace from Lima is much, much stronger here. Mm -hmm. And it's accelerating, which is allowing the Jap it's not allowing the Japanese to actually settle in and to take control. But at the, as you can see here, he's worked his way into the Niwaza. He's trying to create an opportunity. As you can see, he's looking 
he's got two options here. He, he can yeah. either go, depending on what the, the leg is doing, if it's controlling the head or not, for the Jujikatami, but the leg was caught up, or trying to revert to the Osakomi. So there was a couple of options there, but um, sadly, neither one of them came to fruition. But um, he gets an opportunity to get back up into the ground in Tachiwaza, Lima, a little bounce there, showing the energy that he has and determination. Takes that left hand just under the arm there, close to the back patch. Works that to control, drawing onto his leg as he steps across there. Again, a good attack, yeah. breaking the balance of his opponent, and, uh, but sadly not getting a nice finish to it. direction just clipped the, the the knee as he took him sideways this time instead of reverting to the the forward attack Ujisaka coming through there Right hand on the lapel. Mm. An attempt of a Cianag. He was just so far away, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah. To, to get an opportunity of scoring on that. Uh, left himself even more vulnerable in the Niwaza, I feel. Mm -hmm. Bit of a risk one, that was. So, golden score. Well, there's been a lot of work considering that we've just gone through four minutes of a contest. Yeah. And um, so there's been a lot of action, just at the, the final touches of the attacks are, are just needing to be sorted out in this one. Both mm -hmm. have got an opportunity to score him well, but um, the finishing touches to their entries needs to be addressed. from the knee, steps across there, stumbling Lima to the ground once more. And now we're looking for that, what was the Sangaku turn. Again, you can see Lima hanging on to that leg for dear life, really. Yes. <laughs> He's really got no other option, has he, at the end? Because nobody really wants to stay on the ground in this situation, this position with a Japanese. Normally it is so dangerous, so luckily, uh, his opponent didn't continue there. Well, we've just got one minute into golden score. Yes. Tushidos for Lima. Jumped in attack oh. here. I think a, a little bit of a desperate attack there, wasn't it, really? <laughs> yeah. Maybe this was one that they didn't think was convincing enough, possibly. Well, they're giving it the benefit of the doubt on that one. So, <laughs> remain with two Shidos on the board for Lima. There's a minute and 44 in golden score now, so up to six minutes of a contest between these two athletes. Strong defense there from Japan as Lima went down into the Niwaza on that attack. So it calmed down now here a little bit. Two penalties already for Lima, or against Lima. He knows 
one more mistake and that's it. That's it. We cannot afford to make any mistakes right now. Oh, <gasps> beautiful. Oh, well, I don't think he has so to quick. make a mistake. He walked straight yes. onto that, didn't he? And we prefer to see that instead Definitely. of any def uh, penalties, right? Definitely. <laughs> well, that finishes it nicely, doesn't it? So yeah. I'm going to um, make room now for Sheldon to join yes. you in it. And Thank you, I'll Loretta. be back later on. We're going to speak to us uh, later. Exactly. Have a nice break. And... Uh, for the next contest, it is Sheldon Franco Rooks who is joining us. Let's have a see. The only action at the moment is on mat number four. Then we're going to have a look at mat number four. Ekaterina Volkova of Russia. She's up against Sara Padilla Guerrero of Spain. No score so far. And hello, Sheldon. Hello, Annette. <laughs> and good morning to everyone else at home. Those of you who weren't at the beginning when Neil and I kicked off <laughs> this 50th anniversary broadcast of the Paris Grand Slam. Of course, it was called the Tournoi de Paris previously and um, in another incarnation it was a, at another venue in the famous Kubatan Stadium that was a while ago <laughs> yes <laughs> but it belongs to the history yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and the, even the uh, even the venue has gone through a few names hasn't it yeah anyway Neil's come to steal our sweets here as um, <laughs> Valkova scores Wazari. <laughs> what else have we got coming up shortly? Number one seed in the under 60 kilo category, Tornika Chikado on mat two mm -hmm. shortly. Kursakova, Magdalena Kursakova. Also the number one seed here yeah. against Safo Choban, the German I haven't seen for a long time, but we know her for yeah. a very long time, right? From the time that she was in uh, under 52 mm -hmm. kilos as a cadet, and then 57. I, I thought that 57 was probably the best place yeah. for her. Yeah. But she got, she packed it on a little bit. <laughs> People are going to see in which shape yeah. she is today. Yeah. And uh, yeah. But sometimes it needs some time to find your place yeah. in the right category. I was saying to uh, Pedro Lawrenson, the IHF media uh, director, that the Japanese very rarely change weight categories. You see loads of people changing weight categories, but not, not, uh, not the Japanese. Very rarely do they change weight categories. I think yes. the last one was Ebinuma. Masashi went from 66 to 73, but apart from that, it's pretty much, you know, the same. It. Yeah, I could imagine that uh, when you change category, always and especially in in Japan, you know, there are you change a category. Maybe you had a good position in your category, mm. and you start and from scratch. You start absolutely yeah, yeah, from yeah. from from the beginning, and have you, you need to work hard to get on the top. And uh, I don't know if that is the reason. Mm. Padilla had been given yeah. Wazari, and then they took that off. Yeah. So back to trailing with 40-odd seconds left to go. Valkova takes a little walk off the tatami. Some kind of medical treatment that she needs to hand, have. Yeah. It looked like maybe she was holding up the right hand, some tape strapping yeah, uh, it came could be. off that. Maybe yeah. just get that tidied up quickly and then, and then <laughs> we we'll be back, back underway because then there will be a little break I think who has got a better up. view of that he can look o over the balcony and tell us what's happening with the medical thing we're okay oh yeah. okay they continued okay because mats uh, are cleaning so yeah. what do you think shall we have a look to the number one well, seat or we stay um, with this contest they haven't started yet uh, has Kasarka Kasarkova got underway as well yeah. as Number one and number two, action on all formats. Yeah. So we have the choice. So, <laughs> I don't know who's coming on after this, Abdullayev in the under 60 kilo 
and Emil Jaring. I don't know. You might want to look at uh, Kasakova and Choban. Or yeah, Cor why not? Corban. Yeah. Okay, yeah, two then. Let's, get, let's go down to mat number two and see what's happening. Uh, Magdalena Kasakova of Austria is up against Safo Choban of Germany. I know they, they say Corban. Uh, but it's difficult, isn't it? Because yeah. it's, a, it's a Turkish name originally. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm always tempted to, to say Choban. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Me too, yeah. as you heard it. <laughs> yeah. She's okay. I mean, I, did, I yeah. did chat to her about it and say, what, what do you, you know, how do, how do you like to be addressed? She said, I'm, I'm okay with either. Ooh, almost. Slow to materialize that Tomoe Nagi yeah. effort. Yeah, yeah. Kasakova is sporting a new tattoo on her right leg. I'm not sure when she got that. I can't remember having seen that before. <laughs> not my business anyway, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> All down on the side. Yes. Side of the referee calls Wazari from that. Good score from the German. Promised so much early on and not really hit the heights, has she? Yeah. Good control. She kind of fooled herself here a little bit, Kasakova. Yes, yes it she was, was her attack. Yeah, she was off balance, thinking about going around the back, and then she was falling away, and Sappho just turned her with the hands. Yes, good reaction here from Sappho, and this uh, backward attempts mm, or attacks mm. are always dangerous, because if you are not going 100%, yeah. you, you get overtaken, and uh, this is really dangerous. Sappho was almost turned over there as well. The tip. I don't know if you saw with Loretta earlier on Hashimoto losing to Denis Yatsev. We had that fight. You had that fight, did yes, you? Yes, yes. Wow. Yes. Yep. Hashimoto going out. Oh. Sappho's gone off, off the map there, I'm afraid. So, penalty now, the second one. Picked up a penalty for passivity. She could have got, should have got one for stepping out. Oh, almost. Oh, that's close. Similar situation to yeah. before, where, where she scored. Maybe just got the arm down in time and went on to a front to avoid getting yes. scored against. Yeah. Close. Last half minute. Now oh, then we're gonna have the replay. Yeah. Yeah. Just not quite. Oh, they have. Yeah. It's worth having a look out, wasn't it? Very close. But then I think the yeah, scoreboard is wrong. Yeah, they, no? haven't, they haven't put it in the right place. Yes. That's all. Yeah, so it was the second. Wasari They'll do it, and, and they've done it now. Correct, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Uh, for Suffo. I, su I suppose if we wanted to really split hairs, we could say that Ramzid inside of should have stayed on the map until he saw that the scoreboard was correct. <laughs> You know, because he was walking off and there wasn't a result yet. Yeah, anyway, right. it's, it's a small thing, isn't it? You know, I don't want to be too pedantic. <laughs> I, I know you like the introduction of new terms. Yes. Uh, so pedantic, yes. that would Immediately be... Immediately uh, in my mind. <laughs> right, who have we got up now then? Angelika Zemanska of Poland is up against Melody Turpan of France. It's Zemanska in the white Jadogi Turpan in blue. And then we'll follow this with Tonika Jakadua, number one seed in the under 60 kilo category. Nadia Bazinski and Lucy Renshaw on mat number three. Mm -hmm. And Ram, Ramazan Abdullayev and Emil Jaring down on mat number four. Mat number one, Bol Gankai of Mongolia and Barbara Timo of Portugal. There you are. Now you know exactly who is where. Chance to roll it. She's had to tap already. Wow. Didn't have to roll yes. that one. Zemanska whacked that one on. And that is going to be sore. You can see Melody Turpan is going to have to try and do that belt up with one arm. That was on a little bit yeah. quick. Yeah. 
Angelika Szymanska. Mm. That's two or three weeks now. Yeah. When that arm goes on. Yeah. The elbow. Yeah, and then, you know, your hand is like this for a couple of weeks, mm. shaking as you begin to recover. You just take that little bit too long to tap, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're on the brink of having it snapped. Very, very important to know what the situation is. If you're going to have to tap out, tap out. Yeah. Right, we have got Tonika Tricado of the Netherlands up now against Enktaivan Sumiva Bazaar. I don't think there is another letter after that. <laughs> you never know with, yeah, uh, the, with the Mongolians. It could be going on all the way out. Let's have a look and see. Tornika Jakarta, a top one. Yeah. Okay, so we so end yeah, it there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Sumi Vabazar. I haven't seen that one before. Mm -hmm. Enk Taiwan, yeah, but not uh, Sumi Vabazar. It's a new one on me. Oh, could have been guilty of stepping out there, Jakardua. No, nope. just let that one pass. Yes. yes. <laughs> First minute gone, no score as yet. Both fighters positive enough, looking for an opening. First time I've seen Henk Taiwan, to be honest. The Dutch fighter remembers me of the mixed team event, um, the Olympic mixed team event, because the Netherlands were fighting for bronze against the German and it was the last fight he had to face um, the German Sebastian Seidel, yes, and Zabi. <laughs> Zabi, he took that important last point, and uh, Germany won bronze. Wow! Nice, yeah. Still emotional picture or, or yeah clips, videos from that event in all, uh, at general in general, right? Yeah. The Olympics oh. also, yeah. Oh, he's gone over there. Yes. So he tried to get on his front side, but it wasn't enough. He landed on on his right side. Mongolian is leading here now. There we're gonna see. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Legs were quick enough, but the upper half of the body. And that time from the Koshigaruma, there is no. Difficult, um, yeah. Close, yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't think that was a question of the head because the head wasn't involved, actually. No, no. The head didn't touch until he was over. I think the arm was yeah. in front of him. Yeah. It's a yeah. question if it was enough, yeah. this part of the, the body until the belt, which landed on the side. So that's Legs were on the, on the... Yeah, that didn't come into it. Yes, yes. And then in the end, he rolled on his front side. Yeah. But there was this little moment where he landed on his right half of the body. Mat number one shortly, Koga Genki. I want to have a look at him. Oh, so did yeah. Komigoshi. Not quite. Got himself into a reasonable position for attacking there. With Jakardua. Not dangerous. Trails here with a minute and a half left to go. Trying to find a way back into the contest. Goes over on one side, got to attack. He's back over on the right side with the right arm now. Trying to put him under pressure, get mm. a script there. Got to go now. Yeah, he has to go, absolutely. Couldn't use it. Uh, can't stay over there for too long. 
the cross grip, right? Yeah. Yep. Matthew Patai, the referee, just making sure that Ink Taiwan has tidied his belt up properly. When it's done up properly, nice and tight, then the opponent has a better chance of using the grips properly. If it's loose and the jacket is loose, it makes that a little bit more difficult. Here comes Chikadua, close in grip, round the back with the right arm, left arm under the armpit, unusual yes. grip here, threatening for the pickup, maybe. Nope. Could be a little bit of overly defensive posture from Enk Taiwan here. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Just pushing Jakarta out, keeping him away. 20 odd seconds left to go. Got to go now, Jakarta, or else his number one seed position is not going to help him that much. Yes. He has to be able to use that as well. Get seeded number one. You don't want to be going out in your first fight. But I'm afraid that, that is beginning to look as though it's going to be the case, isn't it? Yes. Ojigari, one last, last go. Kochi turned. The Mongolian chest. That will do. Too strong as body position, body language, too strong. Couldn't break his balance there. Yes, and the number one seed is out in the first round. Yep. Can happen. Neil, Neil Adams is raiding our sweet pile again. <laughs> Taking every opportunity to. <laughs> <laughs> We're quite lucky. they provide loads and loads of snacks and things. We put them on the table and we keep an eye on who comes up and <laughs> raids them. Neil is the you make a list. number one culprit. <laughs> yeah. Jakadua, unfortunately for him, not able to take advantage of being the number one seed, goes out the first fight to Ink Taiwan Sumi Vabazar of Mongolia. Right, who have we got coming up next? D d what, how much time have they got down on map number one? How much time is left in that contest? So we're going to have a look. 45 seconds. So they are already in the last minute. All right, well, we'll, we'll stay here then with Justo Nunes of Spain. He's up against Maxime Merlin of France. It's Nunes in the white, should I give Merlin in blue? There's another Maxime. Uh, Maxime, I beg your pardon. There's another Maxime in the French team yeah. today. Maxime Gobert, that's in the under 66 kilo category. Keep going, yep, yeah, that's going to score. Nesha Mesba, referee had a good look at that one. Yeah. Took his time and said, yep, yeah, that's all one movement. The roll onto the back means it can't score Ippon because he, he rolls him here. So he goes onto his back, but not after being rolled. And we don't give Ippons for rolling techniques. There has to be impact that is largely on the back, not completely on the back, but the initial impact must be largely on the back. And we'll give Ippon for that. So Merlin leads by that single score with plenty of time left on the clock. Well over two and a half minutes. That's a little bit of fun fact. If you change name and family name, you come to Merlin Maxim, not to Maxim Merlin, but this is another fighter. That 18 years old fighter. I have never seen seen anything like that. Yep, just found it out. <laughs> Unbelievable, Annette. Where did you unearth that one? There is another fighter das war called... Too fun. Uh, you just changed Merlin Maxim. Different written, but from you Kazakhstan. You change um, instead yeah. of <laughs> Maxim Merlin. You have to be careful, but it is another category. In the end, 81, and we are here in the 60. The, the <laughs> things that you come up with, Annette. Honestly, you are a, a wealth, <laughs> a mine of information. You are. <laughs> and as 
as Annette said, it's got nothing to do with this weight category. It's a different country. Absolutely. Different weight category and a different name, but it is... Fun fact. It, with <laughs> fan, yeah. Fun fact. <laughs> I, I should keep that one. Half the contest gone. Merlin, the French fighter, <laughs> leads <laughs> by Wazari. Nunes is going to have to do something yeah. special to pull it back from here because the French boy looks fairly comfortable. I was in the elevator with him this morning coming down. He didn't say anything to me, he just nodded like, you know, okay. Yep. Yeah. Ready. We both knew what we were talking about. Yeah, ready. <laughs> a lot of fighters are new, but also there's coming up a new generation of referees. That's right. Interesting we've got a, to see that. We've got a few mm -hmm. here. I always step out of my responsibility area and talk to the referees. I mean, I know I shouldn't, but, you know, we watch a lot of judo, we see a lot of things, and Absolutely. it's always yeah. positive what I've got to say to them, but I'm sure one of them one day is going to say, oh, look, <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough of you <laughs> coming down here and telling me that that wasn't <laughs> was I Rio or Ishido, or what was I doing? I have yet, honestly, to be turned away from one of the referees. They normally, and I don't go down there for, just for anything. Yeah. If there's something that I really notice, I'll bring it to their attention, and then they often say, oh, yeah, as soon as I gave that, I knew I should have waited. Or. But there was one this morning that I went down, poor fella. I felt sorry for him, because it's his birthday today. The Australian new referee. Nice guy. He's actually doing a very good job. Mm -hmm. So... Let's hope he continues and has a good birthday and a good day. Let's see if, see if he's in the final block. That's the, the measure of how well you've done. Yeah. A replay of that attack here. I'll that was that. brilliant, yeah. wasn't it? And the thing is, it, it's Absolutely. blue. Wow. Blue goes on his knees. Mm -hmm. White stays up. And he lifts him up for a second. So it, it, it continues in Tachiwaza. Yes. There's, there's no call for Niwaza just because one of the athletes has gone down there. So, with five seconds left on the scoreboard, we expect another golden score. I will, they will surprise me? No. <laughs> well, this will be golden score then. I'm just having a look up and down the maps to see who's on and what's coming up next. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ko Koga Genki has to wait for that contest because they're... How long into golden score down on... Oh. That one, just as well we didn't go down there, ran out. More than three minutes, but yeah. I guess you need some classes, Sheldon. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm afraid oh, so. Oh, the numbers are just a little bit too small yes, for me in, okay. in, in my old age, you know. It's catching up. Yeah, more than three minutes. Wow. That, that should be the motivation. when go As soon as golden score begins, to finish it off mm. quickly, come up with something, take all your power you have left. I mean... Okay, this is said easily. <laughs> I remember seeing you in a that few um, yes, 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 contests. Yes, yes. We don't, and don't speak about it. <laughs> <laughs> right. I do. I do. I remember seeing you quite a few times when um, you know, I was shouting at the. It should be like that. At the screen. <laughs> oh. Yep. Terrific finish. Maxime Merlin gives the crowd something to cheer about on a yeah. brisk autumnal day outside. A little bit cloudy in Paris, and when, that, when there are breaks in the cloud, it's a nice sunshine and a little bit of warmth if you're lucky enough to be able to sit in the cafe, but we're yeah. inside in the bubble. Yeah. So this is a nice finish. Low, right-sided, 
Oh, good punch wound. Yeah, silly Both toshi. Yeah. yeah. Good finish. And unusual grip with the right arm Absolutely. underneath. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yes. Right, Shireen Bukli is coming on to mat number two now. Yeah. She's going to be up against Ganbata Naransetseg of Mongolia. We could stay here and give um, Angelo Pantano and Koga Genki a miss because Koga Wakana is coming up after this and then Astrid Neto against Takeda Ryoko. So yes. there's a, a, a few contests to hang around here for, I think. What do you think? I agree. Very and well. as always, it's also up to you at home which match you want to look at. You have to decide, and I think it's a good choice. Gan Batar picks up a penalty for stepping out. Bukli didn't have the best of games, eh? Yes. It didn't, it didn't happen for her. Yes. She was such an upcoming, who'd she and lose she to? still got quality. Yeah, last one at the top now. It was oh, Milica Nikolic. Nikolic. Yeah, well, you know, it can happen. It can happen. Remember or think about uh, my Linda Kalmendi. Yeah, against Christian Legentil. Yeah, Christian Legentil, first fight in London we're talking about. Yes. Because in between yes, that, yes, yes, in between yes. that, we had the win in Rio, and then after that, she had the exit in um, yeah. Yeah. in Tokyo. But we do have some news about that. Poprekashi. And I meant. Yeah. It, it mm. was that. Um, my Linda, after um, uh, District Resniki had won, said, "Well." I don't need to go. I don't want to fight. I actually, um, you know, they pushed her to. They encouraged her to fight for the team so that the others around her would be motivated. Yep. And she said, well, I don't need to fight now because um, Distria has already won. And Kuka said, no, tomorrow we've got Nora. And yes. then Nora went to win. Yes. So there's a little bit of a story for you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, a great story behind my Linda Kel Mendy. And I know that at some stage I'll get to chat with her um, because uh, I, I was lucky to be in there at the beginning when she, you know, first made an appearance at the Junior Europeans. Yeah, it's about. So we've got quite a quite a history as far as us or me reporting on her. She's always been so welcoming, so receptive. Never had a trouble getting a story out of. He's gone for the sweets again, Neil Adams. Oh. <laughs> he prepares. <laughs> he prepares for for the next contest. Can't keep him out. But highly, um, I stay with you until that contest. Yeah, until is, he's. Is, is, yeah. yeah. You know, so Gambata struggling here. At a disadvantage, having picked up two penalties, Bukli just trying to look busy, yeah. possibly to draw the third penalty. Why not? I know it's a tactic, but that's part of the part of high performance sport, isn't it? Tactics coming into it. Yeah, absolutely. I don't do these. They do. No, they're too strong. Lemon. They're too strong. <laughs> Annette Berm is trying to offer me a fisherman's friend. <laughs> I can't, can't do it. Minute left to go. Two yeah. penalties against Gambata. Yeah. Bukli, as I say, looking to finish things off. And there you can see that's well spotted by the referee. You know, taking a negative grip. You could say you could have said that Gambata was negative, but given that she's down two Shidos and trying like crazy to come back into it. It was unlikely that she was going to be the, the negative one. Yes. Bukli, however, got spotted and she picked up the penalty. Now that she's got a strong grip, Gambata's got to use it. Can't kill the sleeves and no. then not, doing any, yeah. not do anything. And Bukli's clever here because she's perfectly happy to kill the sleeves if um, Gambata 
can't do anything in return. Yes. Because then they'll both get penalties. Another penalty to Gambata will put her out. Bookley would rather win it on a positive note, but that's not always possible. So, golden right. score. Well, we don't know how long the golden score is going to take. So what I'm going to do is to um, get Annette to introduce Mr. Adams. Okay, so we're going to watch the golden score together. So I'm going to leave you and Neil Adams is coming now. And uh, enjoy and speak to you later. Thank you, Annette. Yeah, two penalties against Ganbatal. And um, a chance here. for Bootley to come up with something. Good afternoon, Neil. It is afternoon, it is. just it's one minute oh, in. I know, yeah, I thought, I'm going to surprise him here because he's going to look at his watch. It's a rather nice watch <laughs> as well, very, very smart. Do you know a very good friend of mine <laughs> gave me that? Do you know that? Look, very good friend. We've got the same. Yeah, that's it. Top, Perfect. Top draw. Right. Two penalties against Gambatar. Bukli being a little bit um, clever here, not really looking to do too much, just in the hope that Gambatar will pick up the third penalty. She's had, she's had a bash three or four different directions, no way through, and I think she just thought, OK, if it's going to be this hard, you, you just pick up another penalty because you will make another error at some stage. It's funny, isn't it? We were talking about the tactics of the penalties and uh, the match, how the match changes uh, when you've got two on the board to your partner and uh, you have possibility of getting them a third one up. I mean, is the intention to uh, throw Fripp on, not in this particular case here, like you say, probably looking for that third, yeah. Shido, and uh, to take her through? Well, the, 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 the problem is that Ganbata hasn't helped her cause by the way that she's approached the contest. You know, she is two Shido's down, we're a minute 20 into golden score. You know, you know that your back is up against the wall, you have to make something happen. I think it's quite a lot of nerves, you know, I'm looking round at yeah. some of the performances yeah. here, and there's quite a, a lot of nerves. It's the first time that we've had a crowd here for some time. This might be it. Yeah, this is it, third Shido there. Yeah. So uh, Buckley does enough to go through. Not, not too happy about that, is she? Well, I, I, you know, the coach is waving it off, but we were, Annette and I were talking about it for the last two minutes, well, that's one and a half minutes of golden score. This is what's going to happen. Your girl is going to go out on the back of a third penalty. Don't let it happen. And if we could see it from sitting... <laughs> up here. I mean, it should have been fairly obvious to an experienced coach and an experienced fighter. Anyhow, that's the way that went. Shireen Bukli of France going through to the next round. Koga Wakana of Japan faces Natasha Ferreira of Brazil. It's Koga in the white judogi, Ferreira in blue. It's the first time we've seen Koga a little while. Correct me if I'm wrong, she was a junior world champion, wasn't she, Koga? I'm not going to correct you because you're not wrong. <laughs> Good. But I like to check those things. Yeah. Just which year as well. And where. Left against right, again, just trying to get that uh, sleeve. She'll get further and further across with that Sienagi Koga. At the moment, uh, first into the attack every time. Ferreira, going to have to pick it up. 2019, she was the junior world champion, and then she was the runner-up at the senior world championships as well in Hungary 
earlier this year. It was in the lead up to the Olympic Games when it seemed like a bit of a party that the Japanese were having, throwing people out at the Junior World Championships and still winning. Interesting, isn't it, to see how they play it now? I mean, we've seen Hashimoto out there and he's, he's gone out here in the early rounds. But, oh, look at that. She changed direction there. Left Ashigaruma there, scores a Wazari. Good change of direction. And she's got the hold down here. Oof, Ferreira turned well, didn't yeah. she? Not quite sure that it's over yet. Watch the transition every single time. Tie up the top half. Now, is she going to come up on top? Yeah, she threatens with the Shimiwaza. And then in attempting to defend against the Shimiwaza, she creates an opening for the Osai Waza. It's really lovely the way that um, she works this. Mind you, I think we've had, I can't remember how many, um, and for how long we've had Japanese lightweights who were just supreme in Niwaza. You know, you go down there at your peril. But I think uh, uh, most of the Japanese uh, women's team, same, they have the same turnover. Yeah, track pretty the, much. Track the yeah. leg, take the leg out, and the leg comes out 99.9% .9 of the time. And you could say it's that high. I mean, the percentage is really high. Look how she's persistent with this. Look at that change of direction as well. And now, Pressure into the, the Neuwaza, yeah. She'll tie this off. Now, watch this leg come out. Gonna work on the arm as well. That's yeah, the it's problem. already out. 10 seconds, yeah. just got a hold of four now. You can't defend against everything. Changed it to the other side, gone for the... Uh, Still on the arm. Yeah. Udikarame gets the yeah. submission. <laughs> Went for the Udikatami first yeah. of all. Thought, well, you want to bend that, I'll bend it for you. Well worked, that was really well worked. Again, uh, Sheldon, just such good transition and uh, that's what it's all about. Shall we um, just briefly go across to mat number three to have a look and see the first appearance of Romain Vladier Picard, the young Frenchman who said he dreamed of competing at the Paris Grand Slam. Well, his dream has come true. There he is. Yeah, third place at the Junior Worlds a couple of weeks ago, but could have won it. And uh, you just made a, a rookie error on the edge. Uh, with a penalty and uh, lost it, didn't he? But, um, well, and three he, penalties, but... He said to me, he's been up in the stands for so many years watching his heroes and all the people that he really looks up to. And now it's his turn in, uh, in Bercy. Yeah, he's fighting the men now, and he, he's such a nice... Uh, uh, lad, he really was well, young man, but uh, he's just such um, a joy to talk to, and he'll be the one for the future for sure. So it'll be interesting to see how he does first run out this senior competition. Single Shido against Al Ali of Kuwait. It's not a country name that you call that often, is it? The not very often. No, Kuwait. it isn't. <laughs> yeah, that got the crowd roaring. I love to hear that roar, and it's normally when uh, he a, does a too. Does you it, can yeah. guarantee that that's what he wanted. Get them to, yeah. to roar for me. Let's have a look at that one back if we can. No, not going to do it. Not Never this mind. Time, I'm Missed afraid. Right, well, we hope you caught that at home. We're going to go back to mat number two. Because coming up on, uh, on mat number two is Astrid Neto of France. She's up against Takeda Ryoko of Japan. It's Neto in the white jidogi, Takeda in blue. We've got a few um, contests to look at here. 
on this map, I think. Getting more and more confident, isn't she, Neto? They do seem to go up a notch, don't they, when they're fighting on her home soil. I tell you what would also be a good one, Irina Dolgova of Russia, for those of you that want to see. And Asunta Scuto of Italy, junior world champion, gold medal winner. One of my friends sent me uh, pics and said, hey, you know, I really think Asunta Scuto is going to do it. Oh. It's our first round, get past Irina Dolgova. Well, that's the thing about, uh, we did say, didn't we, at uh, Junior World Championships, we'll see a lot of these on the Grand Prix Grand Slam circuit, and here they are already. Didn't have, didn't have to wait long. No, we didn't, no. Well, superior stance for sure, Neto, but she's got to attack as well. It's not just about posturing. So we were uh, actually talking about this at the uh, referee seminar yesterday, about posturing just to get a penalty, and it's, it's finding out, actually, it, it's something different here, but uh, it's all over because uh, Takeda got a third Shido for just taking the leg. So actually the posturing worked for Neto on this occasion. Yeah, threatening the Japanese, the Japanese coming under real pressure and then instinctively using an arm to block. Oh well. But what penalty. we talked about yesterday was the fact that just doing it just for the penalty and not, not, not actually throwing off it. Yeah, I think um, we may stay here for a while, Neil, because coming up next is Alessia Kuznetsova of Russia. She goes up against Annika Werfel of Germany. It's Kuznetsova in the white Jadogi, Werfel in blue. After that, we've got Lipitiliani and Le Gentil, and then after that, Primo and Mokta. All good stuff. K Karem Primo, that is. Gafen is down on uh, mat number three, third contest up there. She's also got a French fighter, Anne Maudier. Are they in the same weight category? No. No, um, different weights. Gafen is um, 52, and Karem, the younger sister, she's 57. 57, yeah. Yeah, she just lost out, didn't she, uh, in the world final, junior world's right. final. And, and yeah. she lost out because she was going 100% <laughs> for going an Ippon. Yeah. yeah, she was going for the Ippon. Lost out to Russia's Zenia Galitskaya. Just going to see how many times that she's been up against Mukhtar. She's, she's fought her twice. Once in the final of the European Championships in Luxembourg earlier this year. That was in September. And then in the quarterfinal of the Continental Cup in Bucharest. So they've got some previous, and Karem has won on both occasions. Anyway, that is jumping the gun a little bit. They're going to have to uh, grip up. Kuznetsova of Russia just doesn't want to uh, grip up. Werfel gets a Shido as well, though. Kuznetsova, renowned for her near was that, as is her teammate in the under 48 kilo category, Irina Dolgova. The difficulty for both of them has been their. Uh, it's not a lack, it's just that. There's a slight imbalance to their to their games, and they strongly reliant on Neewaza, the pair of them. But they're so proficient. 
It's very rare, to be honest, to have it that way round. Well, I think uh, Kuznetsova was stronger at 48, you know, but I, I no think room. she's, you know, yeah. I think she's, uh, obviously, she's uh, still working her way into the category. Yeah, it might take a little bit of time for her to get used to it. Uh, uh, the, the good thing for her is that the 52 kilo category spot is now up for grabs because Russia's long-time incumbent in the under 52 kilo category is retired now. So Natalia Kuzutina, if you remember, Kuzutina has hung up her belt. Always a difficult decision, that one, when to do it. When's the right moment? That leaves the Russians with a, a spot to fill. Anastasia Polikarpova is up there, as is Kuznetsova. That's probably who they're going to look at. So it's, it, there's a good chance for Kuznetsova. Really got to start knocking them over, though. Yeah, pretty tight match so far. Three minutes gone. Yeah, um, with regard to her being stronger at 48, um, she may have had more success, but she was oversized for 48. You could see it when she moved up. Her whole body shape changed. You know, she had shoulders, she had arms. Did you know, she, she just got She used bigger. to lack on to the uh, juji, though, you know. I don't yeah, see absolutely. Her, I don't see her clicking yeah. onto the juji as much now. Yeah, for, for me, I don't think you lose that. I, th I think um, maybe you've got certain ways of, of entering, and and and, and you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna wait for that opportunity. But sometimes you have to create it, and, and I don't see her being that positive in in making something happen on the ground. You know, I, I don't see that her opponents feel the threat because it's it's not there. No. Well, you know, as we said at the beginning, you've got to be a hunter in Newaza, mm. which means that you've got to go down with an absolute in, in mind, know what you're digging in for, and you've got to be confident that you can get it. So take that last action there, for example. Well, she would normally have just pushed yeah. it, but uh, didn't push it, didn't want to do that, just wanted to stand yeah. up. Yeah, so much. here is your opponent, prone. Yeah. You know, you're on top. You must know four at least four different ways of turning that to your advantage. And here, here is a chance now. Well, unfortunately for her, <laughs> the one occasion where she may have got involved in something, they had to call Mate for the golden score. Lipatiliani is on the mat after this. I look forward to seeing that one. She's the number one seed, by the way. How often do you hear the Georgian woman being the number one seed? The men, no trouble at all, but We've got Eteri Lipatiliani as the number one seed. They, they really are going to do something in eight years. I think that's how I long it's going to take. I think that's the main aim, isn't it? It's to bring their women's squad forward. They yeah. couldn't, still couldn't put a team out for the junior worlds. Uh, I think they'll be looking for the next worlds to be able to put a team out, men and women. But their programs, I mean, they're, yeah. they're, they're improving they in. their programs all the time. Yeah, they had a few with Beboshvili. Um, there are a couple there as well. Chantaraya. And now they've got a couple. There's a chance on the arm. This is the best position that she's had so far. Trying to work the Juju Gatami from here. Nope. Not enough progress, Matthew Bataille says, sorry. I gave you a while, but didn't look as though it was going to materialise. They called Matthew. You can't afford for opportunities like that to go begging. I know it's putting a lot of pressure on the athlete, but you know, if you are a Nawaza specialist and you get in that position, you have to finish. That's a, you know, they're not going to hand you those opportunities over and over again. 
especially if your Tachiwaza is not that strong. And can you remember anything that Kuznetsova was likely to throw Werfel with? No, nor can I. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, a tight old match, this, mm. isn't it? Just it depends, a, again, on who can initiate first. Drop Sianagi, no hands. Oh, now then, did she turn it? Not quite, but she's got the arm this time. And she gets the submission. She was quick onto the arm that time. And that's what we're talking about with the transition. Excellent stuff then, and uh, cuts us over. Well, she took a little while to get there, didn't she? But uh, got the juji in the end. Well, we've been talking about that. If that's your go-to technique, the, the second that the opportunity presents itself, you have to take advantage of it. And Kuznetsova eventually uh, came up with what we had been uh, talking about for quite some time, I think, in that contest. Right, Neil, coming up now, round two of the under 57 kilo category. The number one seed, Eteri Lipatiliani of Georgia, goes up against Christian Legentil of Mauritius. It'll be Lipatiliani and the white judogi Legentil in blue. And when they write the history of judo, poor old lovely little Legentil will not be in there. It just isn't enough room. However, she is famous for having put out, knocked out of the Olympic Games in London. Kel Mendy, was it? My Linda Kel Mendy. Yeah. In exactly the same way that Vuga Shirinli, and Neil says, ooh, um, famously defeated Nomura Tadahiro at the Azerbaijan, back at the Baku, World Cup, as it was called at that time, way, way, way back now. I mean, who remembers After the that? Olympics, though, this is way oh, after, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Nomoro was thinking about going for number four. He was knocking him over, you know, as he usually does. And then all of a sudden, he came up against this 16-year-old who threw him, not once, but twice. It was just, you know, and as I said, they will write the history of judo. Nomura will take top place. Kelmendi will be in there. <laughs> the two people that they lost to. They won't be. I'm, no. af I'm afraid not. I'm afraid not. But we, we remember them. There's Le Gentil in the blue judogi. Lipitelliani will be looking for the, uh, for the big counters the uh, Uranagi etc like that so La Gentil will uh, have to be cautious at how she attacks Le Gentil by the way was paired in London with another athlete who didn't have a training partner. That happens, you know, athletes come and they don't have training partners, so they can put their name on a, on a list and say, do you want to warm up? And do you want to practice in the week, in the lead up to the games? And Le Gentil put her name on the list and put her name on the list and the partner that she was paired with was Anne Kume of North Korea. <laughs> who, um, who went on to win the gold medal. <laughs> so she'd had a week with her and then went to... And destroy... Uh, <laughs> and destroy and some, Yeah, beat some uh, class act. Yeah. Our absolute gem. One of our stars of the sport. My Linda Kel Mendy. I can't really say too much about just how impressive her career has been and how dominating she was at one time. That was an exceptionally special uh, judoka. Two world titles and an Olympic title and a real talisman for the Kosovan team.
I think. And look what's happened since. Yeah, I think that Amazing. above everything was the special thing. Oh, over That's she goes. That's it. going to be it. Yep. Gets the hip on for it. Nice big hip over the right side. Neatly done by Lepatiliani and in to the first of the quarterfinals. Hey, there's a replay for you now. I think we've Here got we go. them on mat number two. So when we're on mat number two, you'll get your replays. Um, by the way, the winner of the upcoming contest will face Lipatiliani in the face in the first of the quarterfinals. And the contest coming on to mat number two now, Karem Primo of Israel, the cadet European champion, the junior European champion, the junior world silver medalist up against Faiza Mukda of France. It's Primo in the white judogi, Mukda in blue. The two have gone head to head on two previous occasions. Primo has won both of them. Well, it started at a good pace, hasn't it? The crowd are up for it. Primo came out like this in the uh, final of the world. All systems blazing. Yeah, well, you can expect uh, Mokda to step things up here and rough Primo up a bit, can't you? Yeah, she's going to do it in front of her home crowd. She's, she's up for it, you know, that's good. But it's not just about the posturing as well. You've got to attack off it as well. That's the second time. Almost there with that Sienagi. Mukda very close. She's warming to her task, isn't she? Mukda. Primo picks up a penalty. Only ever lost on two occasions in a whole career. It's a short career, by the way, cadet. Still a cadet. But of the six competitions that she's competed in, she's been on the podium in every one. Silver medal once, Junior World Championships, and then a bronze medal at uh, a European Open. She is a winner, that's for sure. Mukta intends to dent, put a dent in that record. Yeah, it's something that she's going to have to uh, think about very carefully now on the way back to the middle here. She's got to pick up her tempo and try and overturn this because she's uh, being out gripped, out attacked. No doubt the French coaches will have told her, look, you've lost to her twice. We've seen all her contests. Once she gets the hands on, she's going to throw. So if you get out gripped, make something happen, but don't let her settle. Gripping infringement from Mokdar. Just hanging on to that hand for a little bit too long tired looking effort from Primo on the left side there not really threatening her opponent she does look very much like her sister doesn't she she really does it's, it's, a, it's difficult very to difficult, tell the difference yeah. between the two it, it's only when they're together yes and you say oh this one's slimmer you know tighter in the face and stuff but either one of them when you see it's, it's tricky same hairstyle everything height one's a bit broader. <laughs> a little muscle packet. She's going to change to the other corner. I think that's what's going to win it for her in the end. See the crowd. The crowd are really behind her here, Mokdar. Maybe time for me to leave you, Neil. You just want to walk around again, don't you? I have not heard from um, uh, an old friend of ours, Yoon Jin Bum, 
for God knows how long. And he's just come through to you? Yeah, he's just told me that um, Vugar Sharinli won was the, the elbow out there. Yeah, won the gold medal at the Paraly Paralympic Games in Tokyo. So when Vugar beat Nomura, he already had um, sight problems, visually impaired. That's interesting. That's an interesting fact we didn't know. And I didn't know that. And thanks very much, Yoon Jin Bum. Where, where have you been for so long? We haven't heard from you for quite some time. Nice to um, for you to catch up with us after such a long time. Don't, don't you get embarrassed when someone knows a lot more about something than you yeah, do? Yeah, you know, it's like, oh, that happens to me all the time, Shell. Thanks very much for that. <laughs> Jin Boom. No, it's nothing new for me. <laughs> Jin, Jin Boom just proving that uh, you don't know everything, do you, mate? <laughs> Lovely guy, always positive with his comments. I'm only saying that because I'm, I'm hoping that he's going to continue. Golden score, 25 seconds. Oh, over she goes. That was it, wasn't it? Sadi Surakomigoshi, and uh, over she went there. They've given it on to it, and Primo was uh, one half a step behind. She's overturned a 2-0 deficit, uh, uh, Mokdar, to Primo, and uh, yeah, look at that. She looked like she threatened that all the way through. So did Surakomigoshi. Her sleeves have been being dominated, exactly what we were talking yeah, about yeah. yesterday. Look at take the sleeves down there, and she attacks positively from it. Most of the back patch there was covering that mat. So Ippon rather than a Wazari. Good stuff. Right. I'm just going to introduce this one. If this is where we're going to stay, because Primo, Gafen Primo, her sister is on mat too. Um, Yevgeny Prokopchuk of Russia goes up Hara against Harada Kenshi of Japan. It's Prokopchuk in the white jerogi, Harada in blue. Dennis Vieru, by the way is up on the map after this one and after some more words from Neil Adams it will be Loretta Cusack Doyle well already into the quarterfinals here Prokopchuk uh, of Russia in white here and uh, so dangerous I think that uh, Harada is going to have a real problem with him just my uh, Opinion. Big left arm over the back. He doesn't like that. That arm round the back, though. A lot of the Japanese using that at the moment. If they can't put the second hand on, the lapel hand, going round the back. Certainly Abe is uh, doing it. The two Abe's are doing it, actually all the time. This is what he doesn't like. Looking for the Juji, and uh, so hard on to the arm. Is it going to be Mate? I think it is. So Shido, first Shido up to Harada. Quarterfinals already, uh, Loretta. I know, it's been um, quite exciting, the whole, whole day of judo, really. Not only with the athletes themselves and their performance, but the atmosphere here as well. It's been overwhelming, isn't it? Well, we haven't seen it for 18 months, uh, that's for sure, if not a, a tiny bit more. Uh, to have a crowd up to the rafters, amazing. And the amazing thing is they're not going to hold the Olympic Games in this stadium in 2024. I was asking the question that no one knew, so where do they plan? Uh, well, it's going to be right next to the Eiffel Tower, uh, uh, to the gardens, the end of the gardens of the Eiffel Tower. They've got a, a special uh, place that they'll, they'll build uh, specifically 
for judo. There's a bit of information for you, isn't that? A little bit of trivia. You learn something new every day, don't you? So that's the most important do. thing. So you'll be able to look out from your position, Eiffel Tower. Quick run up the Eiffel Tower in between uh, commentary. Definitely. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Well. Got to get the, the steps in, haven't you? <laughs> okay, yes, <laughs> yeah. Well, we've actually got two Shidos to one, so it's a very close call with this match, isn't it? So. And we're just uh, just getting a little preview of exactly where the Olympic Games will be for the judo. And uh, we are going to be, yeah, right by it. Eiffel Tower will be there. Thank you for that. <laughs> and I wonder what the seating capacity will be. We'll it's going to be 4,000. 4,000? 4,000. The, uh, French, the French spectators could fill that on their own, couldn't yeah, they? Yeah, but really? the, 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 the point is, and uh, as I was saying to... Um, uh, Sheldon is I don't think they're they're bothered about the spectators within the because it will be um, lottery won't it so it'll be lottery so if you had 18,000 or uh, or uh, 70,000 it would still be a lottery and uh, I don't think that because it's television rights that they uh, care that much that's my opinion but I mean uh, I can't think why they would take it from an 18,000 stadium 18,000 uh, you know spectator stadium to 4,000 again which is the old Cooper time of yeah that's right oh, 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 that, that was close, was close well they had a little conflab there to see if it was third Shido up for uh, Prokopchik but uh, Prokopchek, that's why he's coming out, all he's, guns blazing here. He's definitely livened up, there's no doubt about that. He tries to wrap over the, the top there. You can see he really comes up onto his toes to get the leverage, but then... That's going to be a score. Oh. That's his score. <laughs> there we go. So he gets a Wazari. Wazari each. Well, this just shakes it all up a bit, doesn't it, really, when you think it? Quite exciting, really. 40 seconds remaining. Well, it spurred him on, didn't it? Prokopchik, I think, just realized he was going to go out of this competition then. Well, you've got the Japanese that can be, you can actually predict the sort of movement that he's going to make, where with the Russian, He's so dynamic and explosive that he can attack from any direction. So it makes him a little bit more unpredictable. Well, he keeps going for that Kosoto there. And if he's not careful, uh, I think that Harada will counter him. But it depends on whether he can get enough leverage on it. There's oh, a Kosoto. That's, that's it. It's all over. Nice finish. Well, it kept us on our toes right throughout that whole contest. It was one that could go either way, but I think there was a little bit more sort of emphasis on control as far as Japanese was concerned. Yeah, I mean, he, he was opening up, wasn't he? Prokopje was, he was uh, opening yeah. up. He was a bit more dynamic, a bit more dangerous, and he played dangerously, didn't he? And um, that commitment there. Beautiful uh, hopping Kosoto there, it really was. Change of direction, controlled the back of the neck, took him up to his side. Double stab, look how he just uh, takes the first one, then he goes again, gets the uh, hips underneath there, just that little bit deeper, turns it into Uranagi at the end. Nicely controlled. Yeah, lovely. So we're going to stay on this now. Denis Veru of uh, Moldavia up against uh, Batogot uh, Tok of Mongolia. He's the man of the moment, isn't he, Veru? He's, uh, he had good form, actually, in Zagreb, and that was the best form I've seen him in for a long time. We saw him in his opening match. Um, he had a bye in the first round, which obviously came out into his second match. It was a little bit cold and um, needed that warm-up um, stage. So it took him a little bit of a while to sort of settle in about halfway through the contest, but then he just showed the class that he truly is. 
Well, he called himself a master of Tayotoshi. That's uh, he was interviewed by really? the lads. Yeah, he said I, a bit, I must be a master of it. And uh, notice how he has his sleeve to being dominated at the moment. But uh, what he does is he just pops the uh, the uh, right hand across for the Tayotoshi. So let's have a look, see if he does it. That's a very big statement to make, isn't it? The master of Taitoshi. I thought it you only had that. Ah, no, no. I thought Even you were so the master of Taitoshi. <laughs> it, it is a great statement, though. <laughs> Look at that sleeve being dominated. Watch him pop uh, the uh, um, Taitoshi across. He's going to try it in a minute. He does it off the dominated sleeve, which is quite interesting. <laughs> It's just waiting, the anticipating of the, the first grip, really, that will give you the, the advantage between these two. It is, isn't it? Finding the first grip that's going to actually give you the way in. It's, that's what you're looking for all the time, isn't it? Now, now he's got it from there as well. He had it, the cross grip, yeah. into the lapel, and you looked like he was going to set up there. Nice seeing Aggie, though. Very looking for the Nibas there. He's looking for that Juji, isn't he? Yeah, it's no real conviction. Uh, uh, you know, the the ones that would be looking for the arm would be digging into the arm. He's lost it. The master of Taitoshi, well, you need to just show him that Juji. He will do. He's gonna, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to do it. He's one of the favourite fighters, my girls. I don't know quite how to take that, but here <laughs> we go. He's very intense in the Yeah, no, he is, isn't he? he? You is never focused. see him smile, do you? No, very focused on the match at hand. See, very calculated. He's got that sleeve grip, and he's just trying to get the other arm over the top, isn't he? Well, that was a close one, wasn't it? Yoko Toshi there. That and talk. Almost. Closest we've been so far. The winner of this then goes through to the semi final. Well, you couldn't really divide them at the moment. There's a little bit more experience, I think, and. Uh, it's the way they're both approaching this match. One is very calculated, and he's not a risk taker out here. He's very focused on the game at such. But there's a little bit more of a dynamic approach to the Mongolian that's leaving himself open. There he was there, just popped that Taratoshi across there. I think uh, Batuk Tok has just been watching him carefully. He's tough, the Mongolian. Yeah. You definitely don't come into a match like this unprepared, do you? Down to the last 30 seconds of this contest before we go into golden score. And it's looking more and more like that's where we will be going. sense of tension here just waiting for that opportunity both are capable of doing something very spectacular out there but at this moment it's so cagey isn't it now he started to go to work having his sleeve dominated quite a lot isn't he Varu yep. I think what you would say Varu was saved by the bell on that one <laughs> very good <laughs> Oh, Tayatoshi.
Well, tough quarter final this one. Faroon needs to get the ultimate grip, really. He's gone for that cross grip, but then switched it again. He's looking the ash he was, is trying to get the, a reaction from his opponent. But it's been struggled by the, the, the lower sleeved grip from his, the Mongolian, that each time controls quite nicely. Actually, they're both looking for the t same technique. They've both got cross grips. Totok, for me, is just put in one or two more than Veru. He's just got the slight edge. They're not being threatening techniques, but there have been a good attacks. And um, so Veru really... As you can see, that grip has been causing him no end of trouble, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. He just got penalised for it. I, 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 I would have said... Yeah, I would have gone the other, the other way. way. Yeah, definitely. Just the way, the angle of that sleeve grip and how tight it was sort of twisted around the wrist. Yeah, it's not like he's uh, trying to just defend off it, is it? Uh, he's, he's really trying to come across and to attack. Sianagi again not so threatening but a good attack once more in the eyes of the referee yeah this isn't going to be a good way for Veru to go out of this if no. he does part of me of a quarter final stage you would say Veru really has to start changing his tactics here he has to be much more explosive he has to open up and take a risk Yeah, and I think just being first in here, which is important. So far off the mark on that one. There, another Sianagi again, the Mongolian just pipping him to the post each time. Veru really has to now start stepping it up a pace or two. Took the long way back there, didn't he, Veru? A couple of attacks here off uh, going out of this. Well, I mean, he'll have two chances in the uh, for the medals, but uh, he won't have a chance to get to the final. And that was another good attack there yep. from Batogtog. Referee just adds one last look, I think, at the table. Everybody has to agree if it's going to be a, another Shido. Well, that wasn't such a good move there from the Mongolian. But Veru has got to really concentrate on his opponent at hand and not try and play up to the refereeing crowd to, to make that decision. He's got to really look for an opportunity to put an attack in. At the moment, yeah. he's defending. He's been one step behind all the time here, Dennis Veru. Battletok just dominating the grips. Good as she was, oh, uh, nice. and that was the closest one. I think that will be it. I'm almost sure he'll stand up and get the third Shido here. That was definitely a nice Ochigari there, and he caught him well. It was very unfortunate not to get a score on that one. He knows it as well. You can see that. Yeah. Dennis Veru. Well, I'm surprised it's been left to go for a bit longer now. Oh, oh, oh right. Now he's got a situation here. Can he get it out here? Because he will have saved this if he can get that out. He needs to go on to the head. Now he's going to go to the top of the lever. He needs to let the head come up. That arm's coming out. It's definitely coming out now. One last go on that. Referee's got to let that carry on because that is so close. Oh, oh no. 
No. Well, I think that was his chance. Oh, I really definitely. do. Yeah, that was the chance he had. I am so surprised he didn't capitalise on that one. Just not quite sure whether the referee just... Cl oh. Now then, is that on? Yes. It is. It's underneath. Can he get the leg out? I think he can. He's going to go again. Can he uh, wrap the arm up? Better stuff from Veru. He's woke up. He <laughs> Is has. it too late, though? No, he That's has, indeed. Thing. Four minutes and 12 seconds in golden score, and all of a sudden we see an injection of life coming from Veru. That's a horrible feeling, isn't it, when you're out there and you know that what you need and you're telling your legs to do it and they're just not responding. <laughs> your brain's going yeah. twice the pace of your well, body. Well, you get that a lot, don't you, yeah, at our age? But, I mean, uh, when you're out there as a fighter, Our age, worse. hold on a minute, Neil. <laughs> Same age, aren't we? <laughs> I'd like to say I'm a bit younger. <laughs> it's a, oh, all right. <laughs> You should never talk about a lady's age anyway. <laughs> that was very rude. Yeah, it was rude. <laughs> Still on the sleeves. Oh, gosh. It's actually so intense. And what's so sad is that there's actually two Shidos there. No. That's got... one up. It's a nice move from the Mongolian with the Sienagi. He just put that in perfectly, but just didn't have the finish to it. Well, they're out of it now. Look at that. Five minutes into golden score. These two are absolutely going for it. Dennis Veru not giving up on this. He's just livened up a little bit, but uh, Battentog just beaten him to the attack and he did his own technique against him there off the sleeve and he did the Tayatoshi across that was interesting oh he just lost the head grip didn't he he had him high but it slipped out there there was a great opportunity for Ferry there first time I've actually been see it close of throwing yeah Koshi Garuma on the left change of direction for Veru Wow, good match. Oof. What a quarter final. We will, we'll be up to the semi finals in a minute. Nice, Sutemi was there, the Tom and Aggie. Got the movement. That'd be a nice thought for them, wouldn't it? They've, they've got to come out and fight again in a minute. Oh, gosh. <laughs> this is when the opponent, yeah, I'm going to say the opponent's there going, <clears throat> you can go carry on for as long as you like. You go, for it. It. you go for it, you two. They're in the warm-up area going, just keep on going. Son. Yeah, go on. Just keep giving it. Good effort. Off you go. <laughs> oh, this definitely has been an intense battle between these two athletes. Oh, Koji Gary there. Had to overstretch slightly there, though. Kosoto! Oh! <laughs> Well, talk about save. Now oh. then, oh, that was close. Well, Farouz had a couple of opportunities there, double in the Niwaza, and now there's been a couple there in the Tachiwaza. All of a sudden, he's come alive, hasn't he? He's, be he's actually now becoming a real contender for his place in the semi-final. Um, and it is really down to who's got who's got enough left in the tank, isn't it? Dennis Veru's uh, coach being asked to leave. <laughs> he won't he won't leave easily. No, it will take the long way round. Look, oh. no, no, they've sat him down there. The the coach they won't allow that, not for a second. The the coach just sat down there and uh, in a seat. No way. Good effort. Shane just won on mat number one there.
in his quarter-final. That puts him through to the semis. What a tournament he's having. I bet he's glad that uh, Ono's not here, though. Well, nearly coming up to 11 minutes. That's great, isn't it? It's, and uh, it's been interesting all the way through this match. Would you have said that in four minutes into the first part? I would have said it would have been over and done with and Veru didn't have a, a chance in this match. He nearly lost it a couple of times, ooh. didn't he? You know, he nearly lost it, then he just rescued it. A couple of attacks to his advantage uh, brought it back. And now it's all evens again. Battle continues. Still attacking. Oh! Look at that. It's all over now. Oh my goodness me. What a way to finish. Massive Uranagi there. Battentog absolutely buries him. Almost 11 and a half minutes. And what is superb. It finishes like that with a big throw. Could you have given the third Shido, though? I don't think you could have. You know, we were, like, looking at it, not from a, 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 a no. negative point of view, but just thinking, well, you know, maybe just about now, and then somebody would attack. And uh, Dennis Veru went in too high there. Uh, Battendog, hoping that we get to see this one, because we're on mat number two here, so we should see a replay on it. But Battendog absolutely takes him up to clean the rafters. No, we're not going to get uh, a replay of it. It's a bit of a shame because that was absolutely beautiful. It was a nice finish to a very interesting match, really, indeed. There was some highs and there was some real sort of interested Niwaza techniques there as well. Overall, it was a great contest. Wow. Wow. So let's just have a look at, uh, see what we've got here. We've got quarterfinals absolutely everywhere and uh, so let's um go to the um quarter final on mat number four so let's go to mat number four if we can uh, where it's the quarter final under 73 kilograms uh, matt megbakov uh, is up against hyderov and uh, this should be an absolute cracker So I'm going to hand you over to Annette again, who's just going to come in and step in. I've messed your papers up, sorry. <laughs> right, well, this quarterfinal between, well, the crowd will be really hunting for this man, Kaya, in the blue. They'll be hoping to see him in that semi-final, and um, if the percentage is required, well, it can come from this stadium, no doubt about it. It's up against the Mongolian, though in the white, so it's not going to be an easy match at all. It's going to be quite intense. Kaya, throughout the days, had he's on form. He's had a, definitely a good performance today. And obviously to the delight of this team, um, for his team and all the spectators that are pouring in throughout the day creating such a nice atmosphere, isn't it? Absolutely, Loretta. Yeah, I agree. So, quarterfinals already. Ooh, Ooh. Beautiful Uchimata there, mm -hmm. very deep off the belt there, and then a reaction from Kaya. This is only into the first minute, so mm -hmm. let's see the repeat on that. It came deep over the back with Uchimata, just didn't have that sleeve grip and that pulling action enough to get the rotation, but definitely very deep. It looks like, sure, but medic medical most probably is dealing with the Mongolian at this mm -hmm. moment. Well, I can't 
believe we're actually at the quarter-final stages. It's been quite exciting throughout. There's been some interesting yes. matches yeah. throughout the day and some, in fact, some big surprises as well. Some of these athletes that we would expect, like Hashimoto, is out that we saw earlier on. And, um, yeah, yeah, there's been some highs and some lows, some real performances that athletes have over-excelled themselves. Yes. And, um, so it would be interesting to see yeah. how the final outcome of the, the day will turn out yeah. to be. Yeah. You see, with some of the countries that are here today, there is a lot of experimental matches coming out. And mm -hmm. some athletes that are here for, obviously have good background as far as the pedigree as a junior athlete and they've got some really good results under their belt. And here they're sort of trying to test the water here in, in <laughs> yeah. Paris to yep. see how they perform under on a big platform and, and the Grand Slam Paris Grand Slam is one of the most probably toughest events it's one of the biggest ones in general isn't it absolutely and so absolutely put a young team out there it's always a big pleasure to fight here but also pressure <laughs> so both it's a mix of both for adults and also for referees yes. especially for the new referees you know, who show their quality yeah well this is always difficult for an athlete that has to stay in the middle of the mat and stay focused they've had that warm-up they're getting ready psychologically they've built up to fight yes and now they're just the hanging break. around and they're starting to get cold yeah and i don't know if you noticed that I, I actually stood downstairs and it is a bit chilly there's a like a wind tunnel for these athletes on that field to play. So it's not ideal. But here you have the Mongolian heavily strapped around oh. the chin area, which has got to be quite uncomfortable. There's no doubt about that. But it doesn't look nice. And he comes back and attacks immediately, both of them. They follow their line. But as you said, sometimes after that break, this is a completely different fight to what we have seen before. But they both kept their focus. Well, Kaya, he's a, he's a strong at oh, dynamic. That was lovely lift there. Yeah. Got to be a Wazari on that, yes. But right under the center of balance of his opponent. Got that lift and rotation. And I think they're going to have a look at that. Yes. Just to see the landing. Well, the elbow went down, didn't it? And he rotated. Yeah. One and and two. It was not at the same time, you know. The no, hands, it both was hands. An alternate, wasn't it? It was hand, elbow, then rotation. So they leave it. Well, what he did was use his hand to stop him, which again is quite a dangerous thing to do for the athlete that's actually placing their hands down. Because normally in the first through. lessons, you know how to fall, you know. Yeah, do your break <laughs> with your knees down, not to ensure yourself. So. The head is very, very low from the Mongolian. Yes. When he attacks there on the left side. It's a dangerous thing. Well, you missed an absolute cracker in the previous match. There was 11 minutes of match with Peru. And it was amazing. Yes. <laughs> Stop. I don't think my nerves could take another long match like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the nerves of the coach could he got sent out yes. <clears throat> Kaya performing well today this crowd has been immense it's really supporting this athlete and he seems to accelerate and lose confidence out here it's it's been a good day for him throughout. He has battled, but he's been always in control of everything. Look at the names <coughs> who are coming up. Dennis, <coughs> beg your pardon. Dennis Yatsev, Shireen Bukli, Kogawa Kana. Oh. 
all these quarterfinals uh, lineups are. Uh, production line, isn't it, of talent that's yes. out there at the moment. We're just, it's going to be which one do we pick first? Yeah. Um, and it really will be down to what match starts, really. With 42 seconds left in this contest, and you've got Kaios taking the lead, and he seems to have been able to maintain that lead quite comfortably. Yeah. So, um, unless he does something really, really ridiculous out there, I can't see this changing. Yeah. He's been very focused. I can't see him making a mistake. The Mongolian really is trying to battle past the defenses, and, and obviously, when you throw yourself in, oh, there was an opportunity there with Ichimata. Yeah, half hearted, one trip, one hand was not on the Chilogi, but still, he is still dangerous. Yeah. His attacks. Well, he's if he's clever, then he tries to keep him in the knee bars. Are there? Yeah, That's, yeah. We're both thinking on the same length there. We're just going to keep him down. <laughs> so, why would you get up when someone can throw like that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, one second to go. It's looking very much like Kaya will go through to that semi final in the under 66. But yeah. which one do we go next to? Number two, <laughs> straight away. <laughs> because I see several names. Okay, I see Shirin Bukli, we're gonna see Kogavakana, followed by Astrid Kneto, by Iteri Libetelliani. Yeah, it's a hard one to win. So, he takes that one. So, no score so far. A little bit less than two and a half minutes. A single penalty for a French fighter, Shireen Bukli, the number one seed here in this quarterfinal against Koga. Quickly throwing that right hand over the back there, you can see nicely placed and trying to control the movement of Koga, but I don't know how successful she is because Koga with the left hand in the inside trapping towards the shoulder and head yeah. doesn't give her as much leverage. Oh, and a lovely change of direction there. Koga steps across there, scoring a Wazari and just pips her to the post on the attack. So one minute, 41 seconds remaining, and Koga takes the lead. Yeah. Bukli has got a lot of work to do now to try and get back. That was Ari. It's not an easy task. There's no doubt about it. Koga attempting an Ochigali yeah. there. Yep. That's one thing with the Japanese. They're very clever with their feet and with the Ashiwazas, which makes them so dangerous. Yeah, no, so quick in that. With that. Bukli coming over the top. Yep. Shitebi Waza. Koga just manages to spin out of it. No more. Good aerial awareness, though, for Koga. Anticipated that move very well and, and sharply enough to not have been scored against. But it hasn't taken the pressure off because Bukli is right on her. At the edge there, the arm over the top is drawing Koga down onto her knees. Yeah. She puts a lot of pressure now on the Japanese. And then we have a Shido for Koga, so it's a Shido piece now for both athletes. Can Bukli keep up the pace? Can she keep the pressure on? And it's a hard task to keep the pressure on someone who is phenomenally so strong as yeah, well. Koga, yeah, yeah. Looking technically so dangerous. The left arm from the Japanese, the turns, the distance, and 
that makes it really difficult for Shirin Bukli to overcome that powerful left arm there from, from Koga. Koga's left hand in blocks, tries to maintain a strong posture, but collapses the shoulder and also collapses her body. Yeah. Still, Bukli chasing. Chasing Awazari and also chasing against the clock. Yeah. We've got 10 seconds to go. Can she come back? Well, the Sutemi was, I think, no. <laughs> yes. After that, I think that answers it, really. And also, Sutemi was under last seconds where you don't want to get involved on the ground. It's the wrong... It's, totally. it's the wrong attack. I think then you're really desperate. You tried everything, and this is then the last yeah. I, I attempt. Think, I think you said it right. It was a desperate attack, mm. wasn't it? Yeah. That was the thing. It was just throw anything in. And I mean, what? Next contest, the final for women under 48 here. So, looking at the lineup we have of all the four tatamis, we'll see what's coming up now. Let's probably go across to the quarterfinal. We'll stay here with the quarterfinal we're on with Neto. Yes, I think this will be a good one. I think Neto also a big home favorite here. Neto, yes, so she is to see her here. Yeah, she's a crowd pleaser. There's no doubt about it. And she's been she's been performing well today. Um, she's had some. The, the last match was it was tough, but the, the, they are never going to get an easy match yes. in the Paris Grand Slam. That's yes, for sure. So um, but, but she's kept her posture. She's composed herself throughout this. There's a lot of expectations from this crowd for her to do so well yeah. and to be on that podium. So it's to be able to park that and just think, focus on the athletes as they come. Fight by fight. Before she, as the number one seed here, she bet uh, the um, Japanese fighter, Takeda, Takeda Ryoko. Yeah. And this is always, these are always strong, strong. hard fights. And Definitely. if you keep your focus, then of course it's able. And she did now in the quarterfinal here against the Russian who won, ag won against Annika Würfel. Well, there's 18 athletes that participated in the under 52 kilos. And, um, yeah. and there's quite a few missing. There's one or two, but again, it's after the... It's after the Olympic Games and um, they're yeah. making a few changes here. And so, not the biggest numbers we've seen in the past yes. for Grand Slams. Yeah, absolutely. But there's a quite a few that are either resting or contemplating whether they're going to continue. Mm -hmm. um, we're, and we're still to work that out. Who will be hanging around? Yep. And who will be real contenders next year? I think we'll be seeing the, yes. the Paris Grand Slam next year, a very different situation. Uh, yeah, I think so too. I agree totally. But it's a great opportunity for some of these younger ones coming in. It is. Numbers being low because what they need is to boost their confidence and opportunities to get through, especially on the world ranking, yes. which we know is so important to have that high ranking yeah. to make sure that when it comes to the draw, you've got a better chance. Absolutely. Couldn't be a better chance than, uh, than now here in Paris. Absolutely, yeah. So less than two minutes. No score so far between both of them here. Very upright, right-sided fighter Astrid Kneto. Kuznetsova, some problems here. The left arm is a little bit too defensive. Yeah. She wants to keep the French oh. fighter on distance. Yes. Wow. That's a thing. Oh, that consistent yeah, movement. It was that high collar grip, the elbow tucked in, 
and those long legs, <laughs> and they just tipped him behind the knee and finished. Yeah, what a lovely end. Yeah. As much as it was aggressive, it was so elegant, wasn't it? it Absolutely, was yeah, yeah, yeah. Having that wonderful balance. So, Itieri Libertelliani, what do yes. you think? And then we've got uh, the other quarter final, which would be with Lucy Renshaw of Great Britain and also Abdullaya there at 60 kilos, which is another quarter. Oh, we're spoilt for choice, but let's just stay here. We've got uh, number one seed in the under 57 kilo category. Libertelliani, also a fighter I love to see. Her judo skills, incredible. She's come a long way, hasn't she? Every time we, we see this yes. young athlete coming out, she just seems to get better and better. Yeah. Confidence out there now, and she, she commands respect, doesn't she? Yeah. Junior World Champions two years ago. Fifth. Fifth at the Olympics, right. Fifth in Tokyo. Couldn't be a worse place. Lost. Lost against uh, Yoshida for the bronze medal contest, yeah. Well, definitely somebody that's knocking on the door for success. She is always around there and her performances. It's such, she's so powerful, but yeah. she's got this um, posture and also th her body shape with the long, the long arms, the long limbs, long legs, long arms. Yeah. And it, th she becomes very, very dangerous, especially when she can reach over the top. If she gets that high over the back grip, yeah. she becomes so unstoppable. And this is quite a really interesting contest because her opponent, Faiza Mokda, um, medalist at World Juniors. Juniors. This year, third place, yes. yeah. Always around, cadets, silver medalist. So that's gonna be really, really exciting, Mokda leading here. I think the only thing that dis um, sort of separates these two athletes is just that I think Lipitiliani is someone that's had that Olympic exposure, that world um, world tour experience that will give her the slight percentage over her opponent at this particular moment. Yeah. But when you say that, France has got such depth <laughs> of success yes. in these weight categories. Absolutely. That um, she's got to feel quietly confident that of her ability. Uh, Lipatiliani in the Niwaza, oh, there was a, an mm -hmm. opportunity mm -hmm. there. As you said, the quality, uh, three times if I'm not wrong, junior European champion, Mokda. Yeah. Then cadet European champion, then um, She's second got a pedigree. at the uh, at, uh, senior uh, juniors uh, this year. The bronze medal at the Worlds, what a success already. Yeah. She's been she's been on the outside in that junior little bubble and knocking on the door because they've exactly. got so much depth yes. in France that <laughs> yeah. she's not had that opportunity to say hello, I'm here yes. <laughs> until yeah. today, and um, she finds herself in a quarter final with this crowd here, which is unusual for about a year and a half now. Mm -hmm. And if this isn't going to give her that percentage she needs, well, I don't know what will. Yeah. But she takes the lead, she's got a Wazari and is just over a minute now. And she's still piling the pressure on, as you can see in the Niwaza. She's not giving her an inch. She really is going for this semi-final yes. position. She is not going to let up and she's not going to give Lipitiliani any opportunity to come back. Lipitiliani sort of changes the pace slightly but runs on to what looked to be in a Cienaghi there, but um, you're starting to see now a change of a sort of positioning. Lipitaliani, I think, is psychologically is under pressure now. She yes. looks stressed out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's under pressure. She's not actually thinking so well out here. It's caution to the wind rather than setting things up nicely. 
And she's got time. Yeah. If she gets it right, she would have time. But I think panic has set in now. Yeah, that's a, a big mistake, yeah, to, 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 to get them panic. You spoke about the quality, you know, and you're knocking on the door. And if we um, think about who's it, who else in that category from the French, I mean, this is uh, uh, Sarah Leonie Susik, who became silver medalist at the Olympics, won against Eteri Le Pateliani. And uh, that's, that shows how hard it is, even if you got already that good results. Yeah. Your senior level, you begin from completely new and have to show what you are able to. <laughs> they do it, they <laughs> do it some so others. well, don't they, as balancing athletes coming through, yes. like a little production line, isn't it? It's as if we remember her many years ago doing exactly what we're seeing here now with a, a sort of vast array of medals under a belt at junior and cadet mm -hmm. level that was always a really showing potential and yeah. just took a couple of years on the world circuit to be a real sort of champion within there and now we're seeing again once more yeah. you've got somebody right behind doing exactly the same so and unless she makes a few seconds left mistake, yeah Six seconds left. I can't see that changing. Yeah. Well, the crowd obviously erupt, and who would blame them? It was a great performance in that. Crowd. What a fight that was! I'm to the end. Yeah, this is so hard. We know this. Oh. It's a terrible feeling out in the first round. But someone has to go exactly, out in the first round. Yeah. And, uh, but of course, uh, when you are seated as number one, that was not your aim this morning. Well, for but France, they've got someone in the semi-final now, and that's at the 57 kilos, and yeah. um, definitely um, a great win. But that was a great pool. I mean, we, we got uh, Etieri Le Patelliani, Christian Le Chantil, Pre Karen Primo, the silver junior world uh, medalist, silver medalist at the junior worlds, and we have seen Faisa Magda. What a poor, incredible. Definitely. All right, is there a break now? So we have the choice between one, three, and four. A break on number num mat number two. So let's go to see what's happening in mat number three. Let's mm -hmm. see, we've got the last, oh, it's in the golden score. Yeah, so there. we've just seen the final end of this. We've got two Shidos to one, and it's a very, very tight call in this quarterfinal stage. Rachel in the white, and Zakova of Czech Republic in the blue. So, one and a half minutes into this golden score, as we can see, and would expect between yeah. these. Oh, the and two penalties for the Czech, yeah. Lucy Ranchel here, well, maybe with an opportunity there on the ground. Well, All Ranchel right. is really, really strong in the Niwaza. Yes. That's one good thing with her forte, is that yeah. her Niwaza is very good. But the problem is, he's got to get them down there. And um, although she's got a, a great Oruchi Gary, she's very, very strong in a Kumikata. It's a bit loose, and but when she manages to get her opponents in the ground, yeah. she is very dangerous. Uh, but I'm quite sure Zakova will know this. <laughs> She's caught up with the sleeves here. Rachel, very, very good in controlling. But at this moment, looks actually a bit negative in yes, the grip. Yes, yes, because the grip there almost on both sleeves. Oh, let's see if there's a decision here. And it is. It's the third, third, it's the third penalty, sheet. yeah. That's well, it. Renshaw goes in to the semi-final yeah. of the under 63s. But still two minutes of golden score. So that means tough, four tough match. plus. Yeah, that was a long, that was a long and tough match. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Um, so let's all quarterfinals. What is the next fight here? There's another quarterfinal. We could, we could stay here, right? Stay yeah, here. we stay here. Yeah. Follow that lineup. Yeah. 
under 48, under 60, under 48, under 52. Yeah. So, we're going to have the under 60 kilo category, the Mon Mongolian. It is Eng Taiwan Arion Bolt. He's in white. And his opponent of France, Romain Valadier Picard. I think he was get uh, third at the Junior Worlds, the French fighter. So, another quarterfinal. Another opportunity to yes. get an athlete into the semi final for mm -hmm. France. Well, they have been doing really well, haven't they? They've been performing really on, yeah. on form. Yeah, that's the Mongolian looking very sharp, though, isn't he? He's yeah. Very sharp reactions here. A little bit of a pitter patter with the gripping. Neither one of them actually had she two hands onto their opponent right now, but. Um, oh, but very often I like the, the shape of the Mongolians. They are how they fight, very upright. No, no um, fear to. To. Yeah, no. Very, very often they are really upright. Not that defensive. Uh, movements. I like that from the Mongolians. That always looks so self-confident. Yeah, doesn't it? So it's the the train create opportunities. It's an open sort of area for them to mm -hmm. experiment at times. And rather than being closed in and very tight, yeah, they create that sort of movement that allows opportunities. And that's what makes it exciting because you can you can sense that there is various opportunities to take different direction yeah whether it's to the rear or forward to the front or even side but they leave their options open yeah. Frenchman's struggling a little bit though here and mm. he's doing a little bit of blocking he's obviously transitioned now into the Niwaza and he's trying to create an opportunity in here if he has a um, I'm surprised that he managed to do that because only the Mongolians are very tight in the Niwaza to So halfway through this quarter final. No score but no penalties, which is quite refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> The Mongolian is just taking his time a little bit here. The Frenchman comes in with that C and Aggie. Um, again, attempts the same thing, but a lovely Sutemi was that Tom and Aggie. Good yep. combination of techniques there. Sharp reaction. Mongolian tries it again, and the Mongolian this time is prepared for it. Blocks it nicely. Uh, a couple of good attacks there, puts the pressure on the Mongolian, who now picks up the first Shido. So it's a little bit of a warning for the Mongolian to sort of step up the pace and start putting one or two attacks in himself. At the moment, he's just been picking off his yeah. opponent up until now. Priscilla Kineto just lost her quarterfinal I've seen on the ground so no noise <laughs> here All right. in the Arco Arena <laughs> yeah that's a disappointing one that one. so both sides he is attacking here but can't finish there. that yeah yeah quick in but the second step there another push the Execution of the attacks is missing. It just seems you, you get that sense that for the Frenchman, it's about just be as busy as you can because none of them are really precise as far as the planting of the technique. Yeah. It's just under that one's better, much better because yes. he was in deeper there and he had an opportunity. But it seems that when he drops into the Niwaza, 
he, he doesn't seem to, with the Cianag, he doesn't seem to bump it back up to get his opponent over and break yeah. the balance. His entry's there, but his finishing is just needing to be tidied up. Again, mm. drops in deep and mm. no bump up. Yeah. This is a technical detail he has to figure out. Yeah. Because training of, sessions, right? And a lot of energy is being wasted there. When you're talking about if you go into Golden Score, which yeah. they are now, yeah. those Cien Aggies that he's put in without any benefit from them whatsoever has eaten up a lot of energy. Absolutely. You have to reserve it when it comes down to the Golden Score. Exactly. And look, burnt out. Counter. So there you have it. It's the Mongolian? The Mongolian did it. He played a very cagey match. He was yeah. He waited. He played a waiting game. Yeah. And the Frenchman just kept hitting him. Whether it was nervous energy or something, I don't know. But maybe did too many that really didn't give him enough return. Absolutely. So he will make his analysis for that competition. And uh, Loretta, I think you're going to have a break yes, now. Yes, I am. And that's it. Enjoy that one. Joining you is now Sheldon. So you'll be in great company. And I'll <laughs> see you a little bit later. See you then, Loretta. Thank you very much. Well, and we meanwhile have a look on mat number one at the moment. No action as it is on mat number two. So we got a choice here between mat number three and four. Two quarterfinals. So we could stay here on mat number on mat number three. So these are both quarterfinals unless my colleague Sheldon wants to see the fight on mat number four. But both quarterfinals. And uh, we're going to have Katarina Costa of Portugal. She's up against Milica Nikolic of Serbia. So often you see Milica Nikolic at this point and you just think, is it going to be one of those days yes. when it's a quarter-final loss and then defeat in the repechage? Or is it going to be semi-final into semi-final? Maybe you'll win it. <laughs> you yes, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I hope so for her sake, because she has been close on a number of occasions. The number of fifth place and bronze medals that she's got is, yeah. is quite something, so for her sake. You know, Shadow, what I realized during the day, many fighters were fighting in the IGF Chudogi. And I think also yeah. Hashimoto was. I'm not sure. On I his fight against. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> when he was still. Um, it's possible. There are, yeah. there are some fighters. Yeah, Wuhan says that he was. Uh, so it just failed whatever test that was supposed to be, y you, you would think. But I expect from the experience, yeah. well, at least from them. So I wonder... But you would think that they would know that by now, don't you? Where the problem was. Yeah. Well, there are no new rules. <laughs> All oh. right, that was brilliant. Yes. There you go. Right? <laughs> it, it's her day then, <laughs> semi-final. What a, that's a lovely finish. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Obviously happy about that. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants it. No, <laughs> too strong. <laughs> right, so Milica Nikolic into the semi-final. Yeah. She's in the semi-final. And Katarina Costa, we're going to see her later on in the rapid charge contest. Yeah, it's not all over. No. For Costa, she can still come back. She can still be on the podium. Exactly. But it won't be. Both could yeah. be a bronze medalist in the end. <laughs> that is perfectly possible. So, Gavin Primo. From Israel. Her opponent from Russia, Anastasia. Yeah, the Russian. Polikapova. Uh -huh. The Russian yeah. in blue. Yeah, Polikapova. And Primo. A little bit different here from the size. The Russian has little advantage. I remember the Russian sitting on. <laughs> in the hotel at some breakfast, I think it was yesterday, yes, yeah. and I saw her, and I saw her face, and that, for me, she looked 
um, not as 52, but then I saw, I saw her body size and her really long but yeah. thin, thin legs. And I thought, okay, this is, yeah, yeah. must be category <laughs> a little bit lower. Un unusual. Uh, oh, that was a lovely effort. Yes. And good transition here yeah. for the arm lock. But uh, Gif and Primo 100% focused and immediately uh, took care after her arm. Caught her well there. Mm -hmm. Lovely Uchimata. I was chatting with Neil and saying that the Russians are looking for someone at 52 kilos now that Natalia Kuziutina yes. hung up her belt. So there's a chance there. Yeah. Polikarpova, Alessia Kuznetsova, they're all going to be in there. What a time that was with the Russian. Yeah, she was around for Many quite a years. while. Many years. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. What a judoka. That is one of the judokas you never forget. Always there with yep. her success she had and also her, her personality. Sorry, half the contest is gone. Yeah. Everything yeah. open. In some discomfort. Yes. On that elbow. <laughs> Primo looking the aggressor there as she presses forward, looking for the score that will finish this off. minute 20 sometimes it looks a little bit is, is, is hasty the right word yeah. from the Russian so but sometimes better to settle down still dominant get your grip now she tries there she got a good possibilities here to throw with a hip attack and that's she's so tall brought yeah. up a good point Polly Karpov is 29 and Alessia Kuznetsova is also 29 so I'm not sure what that, that is interesting, Russia yeah. going to be looking at. She's still struggling with that elbow. Yeah. So when, when they decide who it is they want to pick, one of the youngsters is going to have to um, step up, I think. Yeah. And I spoke about Kusitina when I said yeah. really remarkable and very really finger. Well, she'd gone on until 32, so yeah. they're not against the idea of, you know, prolonging someone's career, mm -hmm. uh, and that would be the age up to Paris. Yeah. So it's not over for them. They've just got to make sure that they're the number one and they qualify. Yeah, and yeah. Then they'll go. <laughs> when did you finish, Annette? When I finished? Yeah, how old were you when you finished? I was 28, at the end of 28, 29. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's around there, isn't it? I mean, you could say it is still, you got some, some years to go, but uh, I knew that four years, I won't go for four more years. Yeah. yeah. And that was my only aim or motivation. And then I said, okay, 
several things came to it. Job, family, all these things, and yeah, that was a good point. Good time to. And also, when you you always have to have a look how many injuries you had already. Are you still fresh, or is it? Uh, if you lose fun in the end, then yeah. it's a good point. Otherwise, everybody beats you, and this is no no fun anymore. <laughs> Don't miss that point. <laughs> Last few seconds of this one. Yeah. Polikarpova flirting with the edge there. Yeah. I'm not sure that that was the best It's not so controlled, yeah. This way, Clébonbois. Huge chip technique. Brilliant. Beautifully done. Absolutely. Just lost power. Polycarpova couldn't stop it. No. Head was included. Yeah. No chance to escape or to make another step. Yeah. Worn down. Yeah. Elbow giving us some trouble. And a huge finish. From Primo, who goes into the semi final. Somehow she remembers me a little bit of Louis. I don't know why, but <laughs> the face. Polycarpova, that is. Yeah. Okay, given Primo. Who have we got coming up now? So, we can have a look at uh, action there on two mats. Caroline Fritze won her quarterfinal, by the way, on mat number four. I just saw her smiling. <laughs> It's a French fighter, so he's got a choice now, Sheldon. We're gonna have uh, the under 73. No, yes, the under 73 category. Okay, so in this case, we go to mat number. Yeah, mat number three with the quarterfinal because I think yeah. on all our match, yeah, match there's a break now, so we have no choice. <laughs> and least. then when when we get the semi-finals uh, come up. Coming then up we'll, soon, then, yeah. Then we'll be back, yeah. Harada yeah. Kentry and Guillaume Chain. Exactly. Kaya Kaiser, she's up against Mina Liber, the Slovenian in white, and Liber from Belgium in blue. The under 57 kilo category. Also, Kaya Kaiser with the IGF. IGF, yeah. Pfizer Mokta is in the first of the semi finals against Funakubo Haruka yeah. of Japan. Mokta, we have seen that fight, but Itteri Lepatelliani. Yeah, the lineup is already there. This is the last quarter final here, and then which the needs to be decided. Yeah, mm -hmm. Kaya Kaiser will face. Carolina Fritzer. If in, in she wins that. In, in the semi final. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's already, you, you said it. So well, we will see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> it's, it, it's as you say. That's not done and dusted yet. But done and dusted, yes. Yeah. Who is waiting for them is mm -hmm. Carolina Fritzer. That, that much we know. Yeah. yeah. The winner of this will face uh, Fritzer. Oh, nice effort. Just come off the wrong side. Oh, yeah. almost the other side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really liked that short training session yesterday when we mm. saw our referees in the Chudogi going through some more rules and uh, discussing things. And now they are here with the suits. <laughs> Comple look completely different. So half the contest is gone. Single penalty against the Belgium. Oh yeah, left sided here and immediately attacks, jumping in. Yeah, her left arm is not on the mm. best position. Oh, well, okay, the, the, the attack came from the Belgium, yeah, but not almost. Not a bad little effort, though. Yeah, almost uh, a turnover. Couldn't quite 
uh, come up with the turnover. Mm -hmm. But that's a good idea from Liber. If you've got some tall fighters to get underneath, really underneath, not only in front, underneath and trying to, to rotate her. Well, look if she can use that arm for a transition. But it takes almost a little bit too long. Yeah. Mm. No score in the contest between Yevgeny Pro Prokopchuk of Russia and Alexandru Raiku of Romania. That's down on our map number two. Oh, they haven't started yet. That's why yeah. there's no score. <laughs> That's really tricky, yeah, because we can't see it yeah. when we are sitting. Yeah. We can't see the mats. We just see the graphics. Yeah. I had that too today. But it's true. Today. There, there is no score. But yeah, yeah you're right. There's no <laughs> score so far. <laughs> but that's because the fight hasn't started yet. Yes. <laughs> Clever. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I think that's the second fluff that I've made this morning, <laughs> this afternoon. I'll bring you another co coffee yeah, later. Yeah. <laughs> wake, wake me up. <laughs> 20 odd seconds left to go. Single Shido hmm. against Mina Lieber. Both fighters pick up yeah. penalties. Kaiser not entirely displeased with that set of circumstances because it now puts Lieber on two penalties and Kaiser just on the one, so the pressure is on the Belgian. Yeah. Golden score. Golden score. So no more mistake here allowed for Liber. She already received two of the penalties. It's also an interesting psychological thing because if Kaya Kaiser now puts a lot of pressure on her, you make mistakes when you're under pressure. If you have time to build up your own uh, concept on the mat with your judo, then you don't make it's good work, any mistakes. However, from the Belgian, yes, he's really, you know, into this. He's not Absolutely, over yeah. overawed at all. Yeah, I like her position. The left-sided, yeah. oh, looking there, yeah, the yeah. Oh, her left arm, her left shoulder yeah. is under control. Yeah. She needs to get yeah. that arm close to her body, and Kaiser. on the other side, a chance here yeah, for Kaya. Not there. Yeah. A little bit too frantic in her efforts to get hold of that arm. Good matchup, this one. Tap from yeah. Mina Lee, but just trying to set something up before she launches, and there it was, the Koji Gaki, but not enough to unsettle the Slovenian, and then tries to go right sided there. Nice, left -sided nice attacks, left oh, yeah. yeah. Nice attacks here from Liber. Yeah, yeah. This she's little preparation with her feet, and it. then, as you said, left sided this, this attack. Just a little bit too much from coach needs to go. The coach, yeah, has to All find right. find a seat in the stand. There are plenty of seats up there. <laughs> yeah, he won't be lost for a Definitely seat. here for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Poor fella. If you are under the roof, there is a place for you. <laughs> where's, where's he gone anyway? Um. Maybe he's just sitting in the stands, I don't know. Deep right side here. Kaya Kaiser tried it, but she was too far away. But it was a good idea. 
She's looked the, the more likely of the two to win, you know. Lieber. Yeah, Whoa. again. Whoa. Oh! Good, Almost strong effort. It, yeah, it looked like she, that mm. she lost the control, but uh, able to not to fall on her on her back. The was thing a good is, one. is, is that she looks as though she's going to get countered. Yeah. Mina Lieber, that is. Yeah. But she's the one who's initiating the attack. So for me, I've got it ahead yeah. here. Um, although she has picked up two penalties. Mm -hmm. Got to tidy that up. And that was a slightly untidy effort from the Belgian, but at least you put one in. Yep. 23 years old she is. Good little matchup. Have they fought before then? Uh, could have a look. But they yeah, she's, did. She's lost on two occasions. Then. But oh, no, this just is a few years ago, you know, yeah. 2018, yeah. 2017. One time at a Grand Prix and one time at a Continental Cup. Mm. So and again. In, in between there happened a lot, I think. But yeah, before, two times. One more. If she's clever here, she'll come up with an attack first. If it's going to come down to tactics, then Mina Lieber's got to pick up the tempo, put the pressure yeah. on Kaya Kaiser. No. Lost contact with the hands. Yeah, she lost completely contact. Yeah. And then it looks really yeah. weak. This arm there on the sleeve is important, but also the other arm on the on the on the colour. Yeah. Especially oh. when you're right, right or left, left fighter. Because you need the control above your opponent's head, and for that you need the grip there, close to the head. Low. Lunge, desperate-looking lunge from Kaiser there. Low, no chance of being countered from that low position mm -hmm. four minutes into golden score and now fighting their third cycle first wow. four minutes the second four minutes and now we're into incredible third long. contest yeah not yet give it one more cycle <laughs> Kaiser is pretty clever here. If she's first to the attack, it'll be Lieber who picks up the third penalty. Belgium's got to come up with something here. Absolutely. Uh, Standing, yeah. Good idea. Transition. Mm. I really like her body language. She keeps her, mm. the bear keeps her, her, si um, her side, left sided. Still quick. Uh, a little bit desperate. Yes. But... Uh, oh, five minutes now almost. Yeah. Wow. Someone's going to have to dig really deep here. Come up with a win. Two Shidos to Lieber, one to Kaiser. Be better if they ended it yeah. with a positive score. Going for that low Seatoshi again. Slightly unattractive effort from Kaiser, to be honest. It's bordering on the false attack. But one, one thing is she do, she's doing really well. She gets her grip and yes. immediately she goes in. And the attacks are not bad. Really? No, it changed already, yeah. you know. Kaiser, Kaiser is going to take this now. Yeah. Just in those last few exchanges, oh. the Slovenian came through. Yeah. You know, there were a couple of times when Lieber was threatening to yeah. steal it. But that in all honesty... That was a great yeah. fight. I mean, Kaiser of was course, the better of the two. Only, only one of them can win. But yeah. in this case, you know, I, I thought for both. It's, yeah. It was a very good it's effort from Lieber. But well, well handled by... Um, I, I can't miss that one. Yeah. The next one. If... Or, yeah, they're coming now in, right? Or is there a break? Right. We're oh, going to have in, a break. In that case, yeah. we will be taking 
a short break. And when we come back, it will be Neil Adams. Exactly. And myself, thanks very much to yep. Annette Byrne. We'll see you in a couple of minutes after we've had the break for the um, COVID-19 protocol to tidy up the tatami. Exactly. <laughs> back as we get underway with the repechage contest in the under 73 kilo category. Denis Yartsev of Russia goes up against Hidayat Hedarov of Azerbaijan. It's Yartsev in the white judogi, Hedarov in blue and here's Neil Adams. What a surprise. You wouldn't have said, would you, these two fighting in the repechage. I mean, such is the quality of the, uh, the fighters here. But uh, this should be a, an absolute cracker. Hydrov, of course, uh, losing to, uh, just having a look down there, Hy Hydrov losing to Mac 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 Bekov. Your favourite. Mac Mac Bekov, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love saying that one. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, um, yeah, uh, Ayachev uh, surprisingly losing on the top part there. Um, 
to uh, Riquin. So the uh, French uh, plan to get their uh, fighters and their squad as many contests as they possibly can is really starting to work. He's lost to him twice, actually. Hida, um, Iyatsev lost to Hidarov in the Grand Slam in Baku in 2019, and then back at the World Championships in Budapest in 2017. Hidarov getting the better of the Russian on those two occasions. So third time lucky, maybe. He was going close there, wasn't he? Looking for it now. It's going to be open, this. Now then, who's going to go? One of them. See how he just managed to pop yeah, that back yeah. in there, didn't he? Just. I'm okay with that, you know, one foot out and then back in. Yeah. Keep it going. Didn't look to escape. He really wanted to come back in and, yeah. and fight. Yeah, no, he did. He so did. So leave that. Well, they're both big throwers, these two. One of them's going to open up here. This close contact stuff here. That's where it's going to happen, isn't it? When it's going to happen. Just holding a little bit low there, wasn't he? Yeah, he Just was. a tad. And the thing is, it's on the other side of the referee, so you can't look at the referee for that one. He's not going to see that. It's on the other side. Block that hip coming in. Just holding... You know, below the belt there. Goes again. He's a bit loose with that, isn't he? The old couple of times flirting with the skirt of the jacket as opposed to above the belt. This is where I feel it's going to happen here. And yeah. look at that, it's an yeah. ippon, isn't it? Straight ippon. I thought that was absolutely flat on his back there, Ayachev. Hyderov, just a big surigoshi, takes him right the way over. Gets a Wazari on the board. Wazari? Yeah. I, did, I didn't see the... No, I can't wait to see that one well, back in slow motion. I didn't see the signal of the referee. No, he yeah, gets the hip on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now we know, we know what the signal was now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's done him again. Isn't it funny how Three sometimes you just have, uh, you know, somebody's number, and he had his number there, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, this should bring a chair to the Eco Arena in Bercy, when Theo Rican of France goes up against Somon Mahmoud Bekov of Tajikistan in the semi-final of the under 73 kilo category. It will be Rikan in white, Mahmoud Bekov in blue. Very rangy fighter, Mahmoud Bekov and, well, he has, uh, he has really good runs in certain competitions, and uh, this is obviously one of them here. And uh, Requin here, this is definitely somewhere he's never been before. Sodi Sorokomigoshi. He's upsetting the odds a bit here, isn't he? He is. Let's have a little bit of a look at him. See what he's been up to. Do you know what I think is nice? They've just introduced Guillaume Chain as a gold medal winner from the Olympic Games in Tokyo. And we were talking about this. Yes. Because he is. Absolutely. All part of the team. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And as you've said, Neil, if he was in a 4x4 relay team or some 
you know, sprint Wouldn't thing. Think the, twice the, absolutely, no. but he's got Olympic gold medal. Um, we, we are just getting used to that because we've had an individual sport for so long. But the boy's a gold medal winner. So good, good luck to him. We won't, we won't go into um, other sports where that accolade is, isn't given to um, when you've got more than one person involved. And Neil and I were chatting about equestrian. And we said they don't give the horse a gold medal. <laughs> <laughs> they just give him a bale of hay. Bale of hay. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> uh, he says, I carry him around on my back all day. What do I get? <laughs> just a rosette. Yeah. <laughs> on the side of the head. <laughs> rosette. <laughs> yeah, it gets a raw deal, really. No score as yet. A little over two minutes left to go. We can carry in the hopes of the under 73 kilo category here, is that right? I mean, well, as with uh, Shane, of course, yeah, uh, who's Shane on the, the other semi final. In the other semi final, yeah. That, that is actually underway now on mat number one. I said that they'd introduced him, and then I completely forgot who they had introduced. Shane is up against Arada Kenshin. Well, it's not really, uh, Matt Medvedov has not really got into this fight, has he? He's not, uh, he's not really taken the initi initiative. Second time that Rican has competed at the Paris Grand Slam. Forte last year. Well, they must have seen something, the French coaches. He's forced his way into the French team without having the, you know, the kind of usual background that you would expect to have won something. Seventh there, seventh there, fifth place, seventh. Uh, snuck a bronze medal at the Savary Sarajevo European Open. And here he is in the Paris Grand Slam in the semi-final. So absolute kudos to the French team for having seen something and said, no, that's the one we want. Well, and he's doing great. Yeah. You know, he really is. Got a good chance of going through the final here. Arada has just thrown Guillaume Chain down on uh, mat number two, I think. That's the end of that one. That was a close one there. That Soda Uchimata there was there. Matt Babedkov just managed to climb off it, and then he did a tire toshi himself. Half a minute, or just under half a minute left to go. Frenchman looking fairly comfortable. Ooh. The little Ashi was there, nearly caught him going there, didn't he? Caught him going to the side. Penalties on the board either, just no, about, well. uh, yeah. Both look positive. Left sided effort from Rikan. Doesn't quite catch Mahmoud Bekov. Might find himself in some trouble here with an attempted Shimiwaza. But I'll get, get out of that fairly quickly. Possibly across the, the face or 
possibly Orlando Cruz, the referee in the middle, thinking this really isn't going anywhere. So called Mate. Cruz is not going to call Mate unless there's a good reason. He's got a good feel oh. for. He nearly overstretched yeah. there, didn't he? That little Osoto there onto that far leg. Yes. Now then, can he get it? No. Matt Babekov just manages to turn out. Still penalty free. Good battle, this one. Yes, I think just going to be one score, isn't it? Small score. Better if he could get that second hand on and slow Mahmoud Bekov down a bit. I mean, even if that wasn't a really threatening attack, he managed to get one in. And every time you get an attack in, you just put the pressure on yourself. You can't allow your opponent to be first in such a tight contest. Well, it is down to him now. He's, uh, Shane's gone out, so uh, any chance of a final is uh, on Requin. Oh, oh, he's yeah, got it, he's got it. Look at that, he's in the final. Yeah. And he knew it as well, you know, he just, he just absolutely knew that uh, he was on the way into that final. Super stuff. Well, he may not have lit up his uh, competitive record with a great deal to this point. It's a lot better than it was, but <laughs> that win there has just put him in another in another stratosphere. Grand Slam, the Paris Grand Slam final. He'll be he'll be going places after this. And quite clearly, the French saw that and persisted with it. The competition record doesn't suggest anything like that kind of performance that we've seen today. So. Good for them. No, but he was dangerous with everybody, yeah, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah. Oh, absolutely everybody. And that last one wow. there looked as though he was waiting for it. So we've got a semi-final here as well. So up the uh, on mat two, right? Coming and up here, yeah. Batogdok Echem Bava of Mongolia on the board early. S sorry, the two. Beg your pardon. So we are going to go on to mat number two here to uh, pick this one up. Tanaka, and Tanaka Japan. Yeah, yeah. Ryoma. Semi-final. Just, just started. So again, the uh, Japanese managed to put other people out other than the uh, obvious two at uh, 66 kilos. Mm -hmm. Spoke for choice. Well, Mariama and Abby have a little bit of a break. Well, we'll put our yeah. number th three. Yeah. Four. Four. <laughs> Five. <laughs> but Top Doc uh, really performing well today. My goodness, all the way. There's a Mongolian surname earlier on. And I said, don't see that very often. And then Smith in, in another weight category, there it was again. <laughs> what do I know? Assuming that was a, yeah. a nip-on for Orlando Cazorla of France over his Mon Mongolian op opponent, the Jan Munk. Repechage contest on that three. We're going to stick here with the semi-final. 
Nice seeing Aggie there from Tanaka. He stepped round it a couple of times now. Always a, a dangerous out to think I'll, I'll, I'll be able to step off this. And if he launches one that's twice as fast and you, and you don't get off it. Tokdok picked up a penalty for passivity there. Well, I think that's the way to do it. Uh, the Mongolian needs, needs to uh, do what he does best there. Big right arm over the back and uh, just maul him. Yeah. Cause him some discomfort. Yes. Clearly doesn't like that. Tanaka. What more, Shido? Make it quite difficult for both of them, I think. Bit erratic there, that Sodi from Tanaka. Try the Yoko. Satemi Waza there, Tanaka. Just want to have a look at what happened on the arm here, I think, or the leg. Yeah, it's, it's some, somebody touched the leg there to avoid. I'm thinking it's Patog, Patogtok. Yeah, rams it inside, dog, is the referee, who just not quite happy with something that he's seen and just wants to check it. One of those things that we talk about, the unforced error. Draws a second penalty now and we'll stop here whilst they reset the scoreboard and we get underway with golden score. It's interesting, isn't it? They've got two semi-finalists, the Japanese in 66 kilos. Neither one the big two. Fujisaka is on the other side against Kia. He's, and he's just thrown in for Ippon, Walid Kaya. That's thrown by Fujisaka. Yeah, that'll do. And that's it. That's Looks like it's going to be all well. Japan. Yeah. Uh, all Japan final, 66 kilos. I don't quite know what happened there. Already, uh, already done. Was that time went or was that uh, just the 10 seconds? It's in, into golden score. I'm not sure why they haven't gone for Ippon ah, with, right. the, okay. with the Osai Komi. Yeah, well, I quite agree with that. I, I, I quite like that. I think if you hold for the Ippon and you lose within that 10 seconds and get strangled from underneath, what happens then? Yeah. Uh, just, just finish it. Perfect. Well, those two, by the way, the two Japanese in the final of the under-66 kilo category don't rate at all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven Japanese in the under-66 kilo category on the IGF World Ranking List. 
and they're not in on that. It. They're not in it. They're not even on the list. Right, Safo Choban of Germany is up against Cristina Cabana of Spain. It's Coban in the white jadogi of Choban and uh, Cabana in blue. There's another repechage contest on mat number three for those of you who want to click and watch that one. Renata Zakova of the Czech Republic up against Ekaterina Valkova of Russia. Left against left here. Uh, Going to be uh, just that little bit tempted to go around that outside foot. Saying that, and she just attacks with a lovely little ashy was there for a wasari. Always had absolutely lovely ashy was a Safo Choban. I remember seeing her as a cadet and foot sweeping uh, her opponents. Really, really nice ashy was a. It was a 52. Kilo. She's put on a bit of weight since then. <laughs> Went to 57 and then 63. Well, it's always nice to see uh, them using the Ashiwaza just to uh, upset the balance, go over to the other side, the other flank. Just the single Shido against Cabana, but got to come up with a score here. Minute 30 odd. Yeah, minute 30 and plenty of time, but she'll have to uh, be proactive. Taking a risk there, was she? Choban. Not really. And uh, coming into uh, this last minute, is she going to run for it or is she just going to go try and score the other Wazari? Well, no penalty on the board. Doing the right thing by staying in the middle at the moment. So she avoids the possibility of a stepping out penalty. That's one thing. Changing up the grips, making it difficult for. Cabana to settle. She needs to come up with one attack. And that'll be it. Well, Cabana needs to really uh, just throw caution to the wind, really. Nothing to lose. That Wazari has been on the board for a long time, and one would have thought that it would have galvanized the Spaniard into doing something. I, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen a an upping of the tempo, if you like. Realisation that the clock is ticking away and this one's getting away from you. Safo Choban, for her part, has done exactly what her coach would have wanted. Keep your opponent off, keep moving, don't give up any unnecessary uh, penalties and see her off. Yeah, sometimes it's about winning the match, isn't it? And, uh, well... <laughs> Not so sure about that. It was a bit of a no. slip, wasn't it? Yeah, for me, that's um, got nothing to do with Choban there. <laughs> I'll take it, but nah, for 
me. Yeah, we've had one or two, haven't we? Um, strange, strange, uh, strange scores. Hey, you know, with the replay, e even if she makes some move, uh, some action, then we'd say, yeah. But it, at first glance, well, I just laugh because she's obviously fallen on her back. Yeah. But I haven't seen the replay. No, true. Uh, and the thing was, you know, the referee's there on the top of it. Seen it much better. I'll go with. I'll go with her. Right, semi-final in the under 63 kilo category. Angelica Zemanska of Poland goes up against Barbara Timo of Portugal. It's Zemanska in the white jodogi, Timo in blue. Slightly over ambitious effort there. Didn't trouble Timo with that one. Felt it coming. Blocked it fairly easily. kilo category and not mentioned Clarissa Beckman. Yes, it's unusual, isn't it? It's a funny one, isn't it? Because straight after the uh, Olympics, uh, of course, everything changes and you get uh, a changing of the guard, don't you? Maybe we'll... Um Maybe we'll have to uh, see if she's here for the celebrations, all dressed up, you yeah. know? I'm sure she is, sure. Smanska then of Poland. Doesn't mind mixing it down in Newaza, but uh, a real conviction down there, I have to say. Who is it that's going to come and join you? I think, if I'm not mistaken, it may be Loretta Cusack Doyle. Or is it? I'll have a look. Lucy Ranchal is uh, on the other mat, uh, and uh, she's up against uh, Dexter. Of France and Decatur of France has just gone a Wazari up. No score in this contest as yet between Zemanska and Timo, and after a few words from Neil to be Loretta Cusack Doyle. Neither one really committed yet, taking a chance. There's too much to lose here. This is a semi final, remember. Coming up to the last minute. Last minute and anybody's match this. Two chances, of course. They uh, have the chance to 
for gold silver the winner here or the loser will come down automatically fight for third place well this is a tough one to call isn't it really both these athletes have been superb today i think timo for me just right from the beginning has been electric she's been very very sharp um if it was to say who's got a chance timo most probably are getting through but yeah, you can't tell. It's, a, it's been a tight one, and uh, right the way through, no chance of a score so far, really. Neither one of them. A bit of a clash of styles at this moment. Some nice knee wasn't and movements there, which you expect, really, from Poland. They're very strong in any wasn't in general, the whole team. Yeah, he was right on that, wasn't he? It was across the face. I never like it, you know, the fact that you can just dive across the face. Uh, there's no repercussions. If you get it and you draw blood, you just don't get anything, you know, so you might as well do it. Yeah. Hopefully they'll lift the neck up. Lucy Renshaw uh, in through to the I final. <laughs> mm. I was watching earlier on and um, it started off a little bit wobbly, I must admit. And it's all on her, the edge of her seat. Wow, this really is anybody's match here. Now we're into golden score. We've got no uh, penalties on the on the board. It's going to be a long old match. Just one score now will win it. Timo with a stronger grip there, as you can see that left hand and lapel, and she came across with the Makakomi, but. A bit slow, wasn't that kind of thing? Time that. I don't know if she's hoping for a score of some kind, but uh, no, no chance it was, it of that. Was far too loose, wasn't it, as she went over? Just playing a, a bit of a waiting game here, just seeing what the first exchange comes across with that lapel. Both opting for the same grips and battling for that second hand on. Timo coming in again, just hitting a pippin to the post on the attacks, though. Left against right, isn't it? Always a problem catching that sleeve. First it's penalty, yeah. oh my. It's got to that stage now, it's actually pretty predictable what they're going to do next, so both knowing each other's next moves, and someone has got to be brave here. of a lackluster fight this one semi-final to go through to the final they're almost afraid to lose it kind of get that feeling yeah doing enough but not enough two minutes into golden score and it's been again so predictable each move from their first exchange to their first attack isn't it? it it hasn't changed at all in the last couple of minutes no second penalty up as well to Samanska now she's fallen behind Gary attempts Samalska now looking for the Niwazo. She got it across the neck. I'm not sure. Yeah, 
It certainly would make them think twice, wouldn't it, if they got penalised for coming across the face there. Always talk about the catch, you know, if it's the arm you need, you've got to catch the arm. The neck, you've got to catch the neck, it's not the face, is it? You're not going to go across the nose. Like you say, if, if there was a penalty to it, you'd, you'd think twice of risking it. You'd make sure that you were much more precise. Yep, this is it. This is going to be all over then. Samanska not done enough. Might be a shido apiece here. Won't make any difference to Barbara Timo. Barbara Timo goes through then to the final. She'll be up against um, Lucy Rachel from Great Britain in that final later on. What a great opportunity uh, for Definitely. No gold medal there Definitely. for either one of them, actually, yes. uh, Timo or, or yep. Lucy Branson. Two repercharge matches then, just uh, this one here. Now we've got Maxim uh, Merlin up against Koga Genki of uh, Japan. Another interesting little one there on the other uh, mat. Uh, uh, Vladia Picard, the youngster that uh, just got bronze medal at Junior Worlds, and uh, he's up against Richard Vernes of France. Fellow countryman there, but uh, first time. He's only just out the cadets. Great, out with the great. Cadets. Yes, uh, only just. He was junior. He was oh. cadet world champion. That's got to be an ip on, has it? Oh, Ooh, that okay. wasn't far off, was it? He thought he got the uh, the the ip on there. Well, it was a big throw. That's all I can say. The landing was obviously. We've got to have a look at this, but uh, no. <laughs> he got the wasari for it. Uh, I can only think that it was just the points yeah. uh, of the uh, shoulders, not the back. Oh, this is going to be exciting. Oh. He certainly doesn't want any of that, does he, uh, Koga? <laughs> right. This is the sort of thing that you think, well, if I was going to do this to Koga, I should have done it most probably near the end. <laughs> yeah, the last second. <laughs> yeah. It's a long journey. Oh, now then, was it. that a score? It wasn't far off. I think the elbow was just out there to prevent the score. Merlin was celebrating this, that big throw, and now he has to sort of ground himself again for another two minutes and 40 seconds while Koga is really on the chase. Not only that, but uh, he's a thrower as well, isn't he? He's going to really have a problem, isn't he, holding Definitely. on to this. Well, this crowd is going to be supporting him all the way, there's no doubt about that. And uh, very vocal on that. Shido been awarded to Merlin as Kogo again advances into the Niwaza looking for an opportunity down there. But um, my bet was to get him back up onto his feet, really, because he looks very <laughs> dangerous, Kogo, if he gets an opportunity. <laughs> And the youngster on the other mat there, uh, Valadier Picard has uh, just gone through. To, he's been fighting for third place. Like I say, just out the cadets. <laughs> what a talent. The WXV, next longest semi-final for men under 60 kilos. Tapis numero 3, demi-finale, catégorie moins de 60 kilos. En bleu pour la Russie, Amazon Adulaev.
Well, we'll come back to this in a second, uh, maybe, but uh, we've got a semi-final just about to start. So we normally go to the uh, to the match with uh, the most. Uh, Octavian then of Mongolia up against Abduliev of Russia, semi-final of the under 60 kilos category. If we could go over to Matt number two, is it, or two or three? I I'm not sure. Matt number three, if possible. Yeah. Well, I don't think he uh, quite heard me. It's okay. We'll uh, we'll uh, try and move over to the semi-final in in a second. Here we go again, then. Oh, He's got to hold on to a Wazari score. Let's stay with this one then, as uh, seems to be a pretty lively contest. Watch Koga go for it. He was chomping at the bit there, wasn't he? He definitely has time to compose himself and have a plan of action. So let's see if that term plan of action comes to fruition. Merlin um, obviously just having to focus on strapping up. But he knows he's just made his opponent very angry with that Wazari, so... <laughs> well, it's got to be the biggest Wazari that I've ever seen. Oh, gosh, yes. Just he's seen Aggie there. Just needed to be a bit deeper in there as he now works him again into the knee Wazari. Well, that was interesting. Uh, just went flat on his back there. Both feet splaying out. That's going to be on. Oh, That's going to yes. be on. He's going to yes. get the submission. Yeah. And uh, Koga goes through. That massive Wazari wasn't enough. He was going to chase it all the way, wasn't Definitely. he? Definitely. OK, so let's now go over to that semi-final, if we can. Semi-final under 60 kilos category then. Octavian up against Abdaliev. Having blue here for Russia. So what's your call on this one? For me, it partly goes for the Russian here. He's been looking very sharp out there today. Yeah, I mean, it's just anybody's, isn't it? It's, I just, it's a difficult one. Crowd loving it, absolutely. It's so good to see the crowd back. Every time I look up at the crowd, it just gets busier and busier, doesn't it? There's more and more. They said there's uh, half uh, capacity into in here. It just so happens that they're all over that side. Mm. If you have a look at the other opposite side there, that arm lock almost on there. Abdelayev just uh, just manages to pull that arm through. Ivan there was right on that arm. Dully is looking a little bit apprehensive there as he is. He's backpedaling a little bit as he works his way to the edge of the contest area, which is not an ideal situation because you really restrict your movements. It normally means that uh, just feel the danger, don't you, when you're out there? Just yeah. that little bit of danger.
Well, that went quick. Golden score then. Tavian in white here. Abdeliev, Russia, and it's it's all evens. Tavian there coming through. Just hooking on the back end of that leg, trying to take him off to the side. Drop down too deep first. Nice turnover there from the Russian. Now Can he get the leg out? That's it. That's the big question now. That He's might just come out there. Ooh. That goes out and he secures the hold. <laughs> Here he is, Abdeliev then in the offside commie. And I don't think he's going to go far from there. It was a nicely rehearsed little bit of Niwaza. That was lovely. A lovely bit of Niwaza there. Nice finish. And we're, I am saying a finish. I've actually put that on me paper as well. You've already written it down. I've already written it down. I was that convinced he weren't getting, he wasn't going anywhere other than for a cold shower afterwards. <laughs> How do you know it's a cold shower anyway? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Abdulliev. <laughs> Great bit of Newaza, and it was uh, tying up the top half, just rolling uh, his opponent over onto his back and then just getting that leg out. It's all about uh, tying up the top half first, though. Well, let's. Uh, we have got another semi final or that is happening at the moment. Ektevian uh, of Mongolia uh, up against Agaev of Azerbaijan. So uh, let's go over to that one if we can, please, the other semi final. I wonder if they're related. Oh, they are. They're yeah. brothers, yeah, which, uh, which is what I was just looking at there. That's amazing, isn't it? Two, it is. two semi finalists. So, uh, Samia Ektavian is in this, uh, this particular semi final. Good strong grips there from the Mongolian controlling very nicely as he backs his opponent onto the edge of the mat there. This machine's got to be careful. Agaev didn't like that, did he? Gave working off that sleeve. Now he comes under, he's looking to come under the arm. Nice change of direction there from the Mongolian. So like Tavian at the moment. Just wondering if they're twins, actually. Oh, we're into a golden score now. Golden Nothing score. really to divide both these athletes, but um, a little bit more sharpness from the Mongolian. Trying to create a bit more space between and a reaction from the Azerbaijan to open him up.
Well, for me, just Octavian is just ahead on the attacks here. Agaev has to uh, do something to initiate. Agaev, for me, just seems like he's sort of surviving out there. He's really not engaged at this moment. Just waiting for it, isn't he? Waiting for the, uh, the, the counter. That's it. Comes over deep. Totally dismissed there by the Mongolian. Ooh, well that's, that's going to be a that's score. <laughs> oh, he waited and he just timed it perfectly, didn't he? Just scored a Wazari, sneaky Wazari against the runner play as well, wasn't it? And the Mongolians more or less saying, oh, he, he grabbed the leg to ex execute that technique. But I think. <laughs> he's taken off. He can't, he's, he's off. He's, he's not hanging about. He's going back to Azerbaijan before this uh, <laughs> final. <laughs> Couldn't get off the, uh, that map fast enough. No, he wasn't hanging about on that one. I wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. I'm off. <laughs> Just in case you change your mind. So we've got uh, some uh, repercharge uh, finals uh, first to happen in the under 48 kilos category. Uh, we've got uh, Shireen Buckley of France up against uh, Asunta Scuta of Italy and that's what we've got on at the moment the other one that's happening at the moment is uh, Katharina Costa of Portugal against uh, Stojajanov of Serbia something on the other mat now Buckley is one of these that I've been very impressed with today has had a, a solid performance Yeah, she lost to Koga yeah. in the uh, quarterfinals, which means that uh, she had to drop down here, do this extra match here against Scuto. Scuto lost to Pont. Then, of course, what happens is the winner will fight the losing semi finalists on the other side. Say they're on the belt there, those two. Yes, yeah, definitely. That was a 50 50 there. Skitto, two Shidos though on the board. Doesn't put her in the, a good situation as you can see. That high collar grip is causing her so much problems. Buckley. That's it. Nice. That's going to be a score. So Wazari, I think, got the score for the Wazari. I think she kept her, her up. You know, you've got to look at the grounding with That's the two it. elbows, but uh, if one elbow's up, still game in play. So I think she scored a Wazari from that. I think Boucle will get the Wazari. But like you say, it all depends on the positioning of the elbows, wasn't it? Yep. Yep, there it is. So Stuto in a lot of trouble now. Wazari against a two, you, two Shidos on the board. It's not looking so good for the Italian now. Got a lot, a lot of work to catch up on. And Chigari there, just not deep enough at this moment. Now finds herself in that corner, so she's getting hemmed into the corner there, which restricts the direction she works off. But again, she just manages to break balance, doesn't she? Yeah, just got in there before stepping out. 
Buckley trying to keep the pressure on her in the knee was. It didn't look like she was, she had an opportunity of doing anything. I don't think she realized what she was going to do. Of course, we've got uh, Clement, who's on the uh, other mat here in this semi-final up against Nikolic. That's happening at the same time. Two Shidos apiece in that semi-final. And uh, one more Shido to either one of them will mean that uh, one will go through to the final, of course, and the other one will have to fight in the repercharge. Boucle and uh, Clement will be pushing, I think, for the number one spot. That's going to be it. That's oh, it. Nice. It's all over. Was Ali was at upon. Boucle goes through. Uh, so it gives us time just to see if we can catch that semi-final on the, on the other mat. And uh, we'll just whip straight over to there, where we've got Nikolic here against Legu Clement. Well, the France are having France are having a good old tournament, aren't they? Definitely, as, uh, as you'd expect. Yeah. There's no surprises there with the support that they've got here and also have been home ground. It's, uh, but they've got some amazing athletes out at the moment and running for towards that Olympics. It's going to be interesting to see how they how it works out next year when they have the the Paris Grand Slam in February, which is well, of course, and it can all change, can't it? Yes. The the, uh, the year of the uh, Olympics, it all changes sometimes. Yeah see somebody dominating and then all of a sudden it goes. It's a great opportunity though for these younger athletes coming through when you look at the numbers that we have here in Paris. They are a lot lighter in numbers than what we've had in the past. And so for example, 19 in the under 48 kilos. Um, that's in times we could have that doubled, couldn't we? So this is an opportunity to gain experience, build confidence and give exposure to some of these young athletes that potentially could be around. Oh, is that going to be a score? Did she get the uh, landing? The referee was right on top of that. He could see so that. He could see it. You had some pretty good tournaments in France as well, didn't you? World title, a European title. Yeah, world Paris title, tournament European, medal. Yeah. yeah. France was good to you. Oh, it was a, a great crowd, that's all yeah, I'd say. It yeah, was yeah. A, a lucky, lucky country for me as far as judo. I was going to say, but nothing think, luck about it. Mm, but for me, it has that, if you're going to win a, a world title or a oh. European title, what better to win it is in somewhere like Paris. True. That's all it has some really fond memories for me. But it was actually both in the Coubertin Stadium, not in Versailles. I loved it. I loved the Coubertin. I loved it. I had yeah, an amazing place. Well, Clement goes through. Uh, she wins it against Nicolic. France have another finalist. Well, so for the next couple of matches, I'm going to hand over to Annette Byrne. She's going to, she's going to come in, just do the next couple. And remember that uh, the final block, which starts at 5 o'clock uh, local time here in Paris, 4 o'clock in, uh, in Great Britain, and we're going to uh, be covering all of the medal matches in the final block. So join us all then. Uh, for the time being, though, it's over to Annette and to Loretta. Thanks, Neil. Here we 
Pierre Brusher in the white, France in blue. And this is the rapid charge in the under 52 kilos. And as we've seen, that the French have been doing extremely well. And they've definitely brought their game to this competition with the support of this crowd behind them all the way. They're looking for the Niwaza transition. His long legs, obviously, causing a few problems. Still, though, three and just under over three minutes left in this contest. So, yeah. Cracking Ochi Agari there, so close to scoring. Yeah. Slight height advantage there for the Russian. Yeah, absolutely. She's, the type of judo, the skills that she's showing out there is actually to her advantage at this moment. She uses those legs very well. Now down, finding herself in the Niwaza. Couldn't get the arm in a good position no. or extend the arm. It was a bit of a clumsy fall there, wasn't it? So, but awkwardly yeah. to get the transition. Yeah. And we figured out earlier on that uh, the Russian uh, fighter is also already 29. It does not belong to a new generation. She's also... No, which is surprising because they yeah. have some depth now, haven't they, the Russian team? Yeah. Within the women. But there is actually a couple of the... that, that I've noticed. Um, Artsyev, for example. Yes. One of the more mature athletes that we've seen. And I was surprised to see him here. Yes. I'm really surprised. Yeah. I, I thought maybe he would have been one of these athletes that would have retired after the Olympic Games. Absolutely. Um, so, but it's nice to see him, and he's performing really well. Yes, so, and, the higher um, the and the higher the pleasure was to see him here. You exactly. Know. So if we don't want to write. We're not saying that there is an age thing, but we just think that they've had such a long career. Yeah. It, it, you wonder what motivates them and to keep going because it's hard it's not easy out there yeah and the depth that we have it, it just makes you wonder what is the motivation yeah. How's, oh, well it looked uncomfortable but whether it was executed well i'm not quite sure but she was having a go there she was a wasari down now de victor Chloe has to, she's got some work to do. She's got one minute and 10 seconds remaining in this contest. Yes. It's achievable, there's no doubt about it. She's got plenty of time, but it's what does she focus on right now to come back into this contest? Absolutely. Whoa, wow. yes. That's nice. exactly she what did. she focuses on <laughs> yes. to come back in this contest. And it's a poem, but she's not gonna take that for granted. The Osakomi she was holding. Yeah because who knows, she is just not messing around. Yeah. Now, she wants to stay focused. As we can see, it's, it's stating Ippon. Yes. But I think they're gonna wait until... No, you see there, it was a wise choice for her to keep going. It's been downgraded to the Wazari. What a possibility so that was to hold her until... But De okay, Victoria, She out. did really well, and, th yes. and that, was, that was clever, because knowing that you thought you're going to throw for a pawn, and then you would have got up. A mm -hmm. lot of athletes have done that in the past, mm -hmm. and um, ended up finding that it has been downgraded to a Wazari, and lost an opportunity. She wasn't going to lose an opportunity of trying to finish it off in Niwaza. Yeah. And so fair play to her. That was a, a wise choice.
So with 41 seconds, it evens it all up and makes this a real battle. But for the place in the bronze medal match, yeah. So, so last now, 40 seconds, yeah. yeah. So Chloe was hunting. Now she is a contender in this match. And it really is down to who has got what's left in the tank to keep going. Again, a nice bit of Niwaza there from the Russian as she rolls her over. Yeah. She's got the head trap, but not tight enough. So Niwaza coming. But can she secure it? That's controlled 100%. But, but it still needs a yes. little bit of fine tuning on that. Yeah, that looks good. good. Yeah. 10 seconds. Wow. Di Victor, <laughs> Chloe for France goes in for that bronze medal match. Yeah. And the, as you can see in the background there, the crowd applauding her all the way. She gave it all and she came from behind right at the beginning. So full credit to this young athlete. Yeah, and a very tired looking Anastasia. <laughs> Kaprova, the Russian. Yeah, we're going to see Chloe Di Victor later on for the bronze medal contest. That was that was great. This is going to be a very interesting one, and one that you'll be very excited about. <laughs> I remember years ago, there was what's called the, the Ballhaus sisters with Seya and uh, Masha. Masha Ballhaus here in the semi final against the uh, Gefen Primo of Israel. Yeah, Masha Ballhaus, just to have a few information. 21 years old, silver. Medalist at the Cadet Worlds a few years ago, former Cadet European champion. So she really got a good result, a good list there at, at Cadet and Junior um, level. Yeah, and it was in that year, 2017, together with her sister, where they won the team event of the Cadet World Championships. So it's a family occasion at that time, wasn't <laughs> yes, it? Yes, absolutely. All 21 years of age here, fighting in the semi-final of the Paris Grand Slam. Well, yeah, same age as Gavin Primo, so. Definitely, they know each other. <laughs> but you've seen Primo on the circuit, the world circuit, for some time now. She mm. has been around that we've called as one of these experienced young athletes. Yes. That um, has graced our tatamis for quite some years and has just gone from strength to strength, hasn't she? Absolutely. World, world Championships in Hungary, wasn't it, that she... Third, third, yeah, won, third won a place. bronze medal. And yes, uh, she was outstanding then, I remember. Yeah. And she was she yeah. was just so young and bouncy and, and she took everyone by storm. Then yep. no one really expected <laughs> it. But the one thing with the Israeli team is that they are always very well prepared. They're a very strong team for the women, there's no doubt about yeah. it. Um, Yeah. There. Right side it. A little bit awkward with the upper body control there, but um, she was bouncing off to the, the side rather than being able to get a turn on it, just to the lack of obviously upper body control that she had. Two penalties already. I know it's on not her side, yeah. Primo coming over the top again, the Uchimata. Catching like a Koshigaruma and then working off that Uchimata as well. Very awkward in size and awkward within sort of exchange, really. Yeah. It becomes yeah. a little bit untidy for both of them. I think this is what we've got is a real clash yeah. of 
two athletes that have got the same techniques and they're clashing heavily against each other. And I just think Primo's just pipping it to the post each time, just getting in there, just that little bit thicker. Lost the grip, lost yeah. the focus in this situation. Still nothing's changed on that scoreboard other than the time's ticking yes, away. Just a minute and left. Yeah. yeah, now it's a question who got a better focus. Marcia, and she's under pressure though, isn't she, all the way right from the beginning. Yeah, oh, looking there for the Shimivasa. Yeah, it, is it on? No, uh, she <laughs> escaped from that situation. We, we didn't see if the lapel was above or under underneath the chin. But. Uh, Good attempt from the German. So, 38 seconds. The left leg for Masha Ballhaus. Well, and her upper half of the body is too much. The thing is, that bent right over. hand was the elbow was tucked up in the air and it had no power whatsoever. Yeah. She needs so to lift she her leg get up. The direction, could yes. she? Yes, yes. The, the tension, you know, from the upper half to the lower half of the body. Oji. She must lift that leg it's up. It's just a weird transition, isn't it? The, the right hand is there. But it's just the elbows in the wrong positioning, isn't it? Yeah. It's not getting the leverage that she requires. Yeah. The hips are in, the legs in good position, but the arms just seem a little bit messy. Yeah. Golden score. <gasps> well, it's still dicey, really, with the two shidos, and that's the that's a shame, really, because I, I think for the, the German has really come back, and she's now started to focus. She's a contender, and she's been a real threat in that second part of this contest, but there's a lovely old Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. That yeah. is, you can't. Yeah. Just a good reaction here from Gf and Primo, who realized that Masha Ballhaus tried to uh, attack her with the ca like she, counter, and yeah. then used it for for her own attack. She changed the tactics as well. Yeah. Primo came in for the Ichimata. She was forward attacking all the time. She showed the forward and then she sneakily switched it to the, the Ochigari to the rear. Yeah, so one we're gonna see in the final and the other we're gonna see for the bronze medal contest. Both got a chance here. Yes, we'll go for the, I think, the semi-final here. Yeah. yeah. Neto. So, ah, we're gonna have Astrid Neto. In the under 52 kilo come the, uh, the other semi final. Cordolo Doin Bischelt of Mongolia is her opponent. She already received two penalties. Neto won. So a little bit more than a minute. I know there's a lot of pressure on some. Some of the athletes from France have actually been, have risen to the occasion, haven't they? This crowd has boosted their confidence. It's gave them the, the sort of platform that they can really perform. And yeah. then there's the odd one or two. And, and I think here with Neto, it's one of these situations that that expectation has been a little bit sort yeah. of going against her, really. I think the pressure she's put on herself here in this competition is, is reflected on her performance at, on a couple of occasions here today. Yeah.
Mongolian looking a little bit livelier there. Neto just trying to stay very focused mm -hmm. and in control here and trying not to get too flustered. She has the advantage that she's only got the one Shido at the moment, but as we know, that can change so quickly. Yeah, exactly. Neto's looking for that right hand to go deep over the back there. When she connects there, she can be very dangerous. There's no doubt about that. Oh, let's see what comes now. Yeah, okay, nothing. It's interesting. Last attack, NATO was going a little bit more backward than forward, and the Mongolian stepped forward, trying to to catch her. Neto's just wanting to get that big arm over the top. She wants to throw it deep and then come straight across with those legs for the big throw. She's hiding the time, but as you can see, the left hand there on the rib cage is yeah. like a, a blocking action. But she pulls her back up onto her feet to yeah. finish her there. It's like, I'm not going to play in the knee was. I just want you to get back up and start fighting. And she literally dragged her from her knees back up onto her feet. <laughs> Golden score, 48 seconds now. Coming up to the first minute. And then change. The high collar grip goes to the Mongolian. Lovely. Mistake. Yeah. Mistake for the Mongolian going high. She should have stayed low and left herself totally exposed for that Oichi Gary. Yeah. That was a good one, but not she enough. Did. <laughs> now, uh, let's see. Oh, I don't know. There was, um, for me, I thought that was uh, a score. Yeah. I did think my it first, was a score. My first feeling also uh, was that it was really was close, but... Uh, but they, no, it's not the score. But they didn't it decide about the score. They said, OK, the first penalty. Fischer looks a little bit surprised. It's a shame, really, because I would have loved it. I would have preferred it being given a sort of score rather than the penalty. It would have been a nicer finish. You're it? right. You're right. The score is always, yeah. always better. So the final in the under 52 kilo camera will, will be between Astrid Kneto and Gefen Primo. That will be a really interesting It'll final. It will be a battle and a half. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> definitely is going to be very interested in all right. So we're going to have two rapid charge contests. Thierry Libertiani, who was the number one seed here. She's up against Priscilla Kneto. I know. <laughs> <laughs> These Natos just keep getting over. <laughs> Can't stop them from gracing our mat. <laughs> but Lipatiliani is going to give her a good run for her money because she's had actually a really good day today. And um, yeah, I, I like her judo. There's a there's a there's a rawness in it, but there's um, for me there's some also some nice styles. She, that uchimata that she's got. Can be yes, dangerous. and her hip and, and wow. She can be aggressive when she likes as well, but. Uh, yeah, she lost out against Faisal Mokda today. In her pool final, Eteri. Now here in this rubber charge contest, the winner with the th chances for Bronx. <laughs> Mina Liebert just won her rubber charge contest. And uh, oh, well, she's fighting against the French. <laughs> the crowd appreciated yes, her I win. Saw. Must have been a good one. I saw her earlier on. She was yeah. good. She, I like to see her, the Belgian, Mina Liber. Yeah. So, well, really, we should move across because yes, there's no disrespect coming. for this. Um, this couple that are on at the moment, but because it's a semi final, we really need to be following the semi final. So we'll absolutely cross to man number three. Yes. 
Kaya Kaiser from Slovenia is up against the German Caroline Fritze. I have seen her a few times before here today and uh, like the style, oh, but let's see. Straight out there, yeah. the Slovenian. A Kaiser. Of, yeah. The knee looked a little bit in danger, yeah. but uh, that, that's also typical for Kaya Kaiser. She got a grip and immediately she goes straight. And, and that yes. was good. And good attacks. Um, good attacks. Yeah. Yeah. Frieza wasn't expecting that. That was one thing. She was a little bit cold on the start there. Um, but she was lucky enough it didn't actually change the scoreboard, but um, a bit of a wake up call, most probably, for the German. Yeah. Both the same age with 21 years. Kaya Kaiser, very high ranked in her category. Third at the Junior Worlds 2018. Oh, that is with a lot of speed here <laughs> in that yeah. contest. Needs to have a little bit more control here, doesn't it? They yeah. need to control yeah. it. Rather than picking up on the speed, the control has to be there now. Yeah. Winner I think they didn't meet before. I think, this match is going to, I think this match is going to get better as it calms down yeah. halfway through, if it goes that far. I think yeah. we get to the second minute, we're going to see a, a very controlled but calculated match. The tactics will start coming in. Yeah, a young fighter here from Berlin. Fritze, the chance here maybe on the ground. Oh, she's hunting for it. Yeah. And pulling the pressure on. Kaiser, who defends nicely. I think it was in Zagreb where she medaled. Bronze medal at a Grand Prix, bronze. yes. Mm. Yeah, bronze medal there. Ooh, oh, yes, nice. That was strong. That was powerful. She clambered over the top of her there on that one. Both very strong athletes, and uh, it's going to be an interesting outcome here. Whoever, just seeing who's on the other half. It's the other semi final you're going to have right. between Faisa Mokta and Funakupu Haruka. semi-final Mukta she's been strong today as well well and this is a happy phase and we hope that Kaya Kaiser is not injured too yes. bad but you're gonna see Caroline Fritze in the final so let's see let's have a look down on at number one then and uh, let's see who will be her opponent we keep you up to date about Kaya when she leaves the mat. Okay, so no score so far. Both Shido, they picked up. And uh, almost half the contest is gone here. The winner will face Caroline Fritze. Not really a great success for the German to be in the final here in Paris. And as you said, this is a great opportunity uh, the ship, yeah, for the at this year, in this year now, after the Olympics here too. And for the German team in that weight category, who else is a real contender? Yeah. At the moment. It's 
have a look there. Yeah. First of all, don't need to forget. Theresa Stoll. Yeah. But she's then. She comes as second. Carolina. Yeah. But definitely there's a chase on with the performance that we're seeing already with this young lady. Yeah. And with the pedigree that she has as a, a junior. Yeah. So we are in the last minute now. So this is the last contest of the morning session. Yes. First block. So it's been really interesting so far, the, the contest that we've seen throughout the day. Some very strong matches coming up, some exciting contests we're going to be seeing in the final block. Yeah, the final block will be at 5.30, 5, 5, 5, 5 o'clock, all right. Okay, yes. and I think in between is the opening ceremony. Yes. Yeah, so at quarter to four, I think. There is going to be the... Very correct, yes. Yeah. So 3.45 this afternoon, yeah. we'll have the opening ceremony, followed by fans entertainment it's yes and then we'll have the final block all right so we're gonna have the second finalist here it is the japanese Funakubo haruka she will face the german so, so it's been a really interesting it's going to break some matches and we will commence again at five o'clock Exactly. So, the preliminaries from the first day come to an end. We had a good yes. start, huh? I've seen some. I think it's been a great really start. And, do you know, the rippling for me it's, it's wonderful. Yeah, it's wonderful to see so many spectators here today. That's that's the thing that I've been really. Um, it's been fun to watch. But I'm going to leave you now because you're going to do a bit of a wrap-up and Sheldon will join you on that wrap-up before oh, we go okay. to the final block. So, from myself, I'll speak Loretta. to you later. Yes, yeah, speak to you later. Thank you very medal. much. <laughs> so, we're going to have a little wrap-up, go through, through categories from the first day. And uh, I'm happy now to be here with, with Sheldon. Fights R are over for right, the preliminaries. We're, we're, we're back. <laughs> I mean, we, we had uh, quite a time of it, yes. didn't we? I mean, r really, we want to go over some of the big names. And then, of course, we want to look at what the French did, because given it's their 50th anniversary, they'll, they will have wanted to take home a few medals. So just let, let's have a look and see what happened. We'll start off with the under 48 kilo uh, category. Right. Um, and we can look at who's in, the, who's in the medal matches. So Shireen Buckley and Melitia Nikolic, Katarina Costa and Blondine Pont. Those are the bronze medal mm -hmm. contests. So the, the, the French can't be that disappointed because Absolutely in not. each of the, the bronze medal matches, they've got a representative. And then when it comes to the final, Koga Wakana, no surprise to us, is in the final against Melanie uh, Legu Clement. Clement. Give, give her her new uh, name there. So Melanie Clement, you know, still up there showing her metal, maybe smarting from the fact that it was Shireen Bookley that got the pick to go to yes. um, Tokyo and not her. But here she is in the final of the Paris Grand Slam. Absolutely, a big chance. And in every medal match there, there is uh, a French fighter as you said it so I think the French Federation can be really happy with that tough, final block. Tough ask to go up against Koga who's looked on really good form today hasn't she? Yeah and it's always of course it's always a difficult task to fight against the Japanese but I think here at home at home in Paris for the French for, for, for Melanie uh, Le, Le Goût Clément I think in France when you have French fighter and you are in France, then everything is possible. <laughs> right, good luck uh, to the pair of them uh, in that final. And then when we come to the under 52 kilo category, Alessia Kuznetsova of Russia goes up against uh, Masha Balhaus of Germany. And it's Chloe de Victor 
to go up against Bish, uh, Bishrael Cordeloy of Mongolia. Those are the two uh, bronze medal matches. Yes. Again, it, at least in the weight category, you've got a French representative in one of the bronze medal matches. So again, they'll Absolutely. feel uh, good about that. And Chloe de Victor, fresh from her Junior World Championship winning, win, showing her medal here at, in, in the seniors. Yeah, and what a what continuation that is for her. I mean, now she's in Paris and fighting here for a medal. Okay, and then the final is Astrid Neto to go up against Gafen uh, Primo of Israel. There was so much talk this morning about Karem uh, Primo, and, uh, Primo and I <laughs> myself got involved uh, in, in that talk. And yet it's uh, Gafen who's made her way uh, to the final and she'll uh, face uh, Astrid Neto. Yes, both two absolute, absolute uh, brilliant fighters and I, I have seen both of them today and I like both of the judo so it will be a really good, exciting final. Right, looking forward uh, to that. The under 57 uh, kilo category. We've already mentioned uh, Gafen Primo going out uh, early on. The number one seed was Eter Lipoteliani of Georgia. She's in the first of the bronze medal matches against Kaya Kaiser. However, I suspect that Kaiser is not going to come out because she just had her arm taken off by uh, Caroline Fritzer. Fritzer in the semi-final. Oh, However, exactly. you may not have seen it because you, our commentary position is high up and there's a big, um, not barrier, but something in front of us so you can't see. Caroline Fritzer came around the side of the mat, waited for Kaya Kaiser to come off, went to the medical table, uh, with her and walked out <coughs> uh, with her. So real nice care and attention wow. having arm yes. locked her because it was on sharp yes. and she was in some degree of discomfort. That's Kaya Kaiser. Unlikely, I think, to come out in an hour or, or so yes. from now. Mina Lieber of Belgium, who we were impressed uh, with Absolutely. early on, yes. is up against... Uh, Marta. Fe oh, Faisa, Faisa Mokta. Faisa Mokta, yeah, exactly. Faisa Mokta yes. of uh, France. I was saying Faisa, but it's Faisa. I heard the French um, commentator uh, <laughs> say that. <laughs> and A, A before I in, um, exactly. in French is like lay, isn't it? You know, yeah. Ole, Café Ole. So then Faisa. AI, so yeah. it's Faisa. We worked that one out eventually. <laughs> um, the final is between Funakubo Haruka of Japan. She goes up against Carolina Fritzer of Germany. Tough ask for the German, but what a showing she's put on today. Yes. Incredible. Yes, absolutely. I really liked her. I mean, Caroline Fritzer, she uh, won the bronze medal in Zagreb. She's on a good way, and it's a big, a big chance here. She's in the final. So, but still one more fight to go. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, the under 63 kilo category. Let's take a quick uh, look at what happened there. Number one seed again was out early. Magdalena Kasapova lost out to Safo uh, Choban of Germany. Yeah. Uh, the bronze medal matches. The aforementioned Safo Choban is in the first. She will go up against uh, Manon Deketa of France. And then the second of the uh, bronze medal matches will be my partner who is just um, having the PCR test with me, Ekaterina Valkova. She goes up against Angelika Zemanska of Poland. Your thoughts on those two? Did you see them earlier on? I saw Zemanska and uh, I saw her one fight. I think we had a comment. Uh, yeah. We're commentating that one fight. Well, she was in a good. She was in a good shape. I mean, sometimes you get. You you need to get some fights to get really into it, but it looked good. So. But it will, it's really hard to say, especially yeah. in this fight, Russia against Poland. Um, for me, it's, it's, it's quite open. And the final is between Barbara Timo of yeah. Portugal. She goes up against Lucy Renschel of Great Britain. Your thoughts on that one? Yeah. So, um, Lucy Renschel, I've, I think I've seen the fight before, or the fight before the fight before, and then she trailed, and then she came back. And she's in a good mood, absolutely. But uh, I mean, she's up against Barbara Timo. Yeah, could, could be a tough <laughs> the Portuguese, one. Portuguese, for sure, it will. Yeah. Some of the um, another number one seed who went out early, Tornica Chicardo yeah. of the Netherlands, and then we were kind of all eyes on Koga Genki, and he lost out to Balabe Agaev of Azerbaijan in the quarter final. Yeah. So he had to go down into the repechage. He won his uh, repechage contest and he will uh, face in that 
uh, first in the first yes. of the bronze medal contests. Uh, Enk Taiwan Sumiyabaza of Mongolia. That's the first of the bronze medal contest, and then the second is the bronze medal winner from the Junior World Championships, yes, exactly. the young youngster Roman Valadier Picard, who told us all about his dream to come and compete here, and he is now. And then his his opponent is Enk <laughs> Taiwan. Aaron Unbold. So <laughs> yes. uh, they've got to be brothers, haven't they? Come on, <laughs> they've got to be. You know. So prowess, no? Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's in the second of the yeah. bronze medal contest, and then the final is uh, Balabe Agayev of Azerbaijan. He's going to go up against Ramazan Abdullayev of Russia. Yeah. Did Good you get line. a chance to see them? Good earlier? lineup. I think. Uh, yes. Yes. I, I haven't had the chance to see Koga, unfortunately, but I will see him now. I'm happy for that. And uh, I've seen uh, the French fighter, Valadier Picard, before. And yeah, with his background, bronze medalist at the Junior Worlds. Another great success to get another step here, mm. especially uh, in his uh, home country, in his, in his country. And I've also seen uh, Abdullayev before here. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think sharp. As, uh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Azerbaijan against Russia. Always uh, a good matchup. Yeah. Right, the first of the bronze medal contest in the under 66 kilo category. Denis Vieru of Moldova goes up against Walid Kaya of France. Another chance for France to take medals. They really have done extremely well today. Orlando yes. uh, Cazola of France will go up against uh, Bat Ogtog, uh, Erkan Mbaya of Mongolia in the second of the bronze medal contest. Yes. And it's an all Japan final between Tanaka Uriyoma and Fujisaka Taiko. Yes, and we know that all Japan uh, contests medal, uh, matches because they are so close to and got very often a similar style that it's um, sometimes only really a little decision, a little difference. But as always, we hope to see still great attacks there and uh, maybe the, one of us can surprise us with a big with a Nippon with a big technique in the final. We shall see. Yes. The under 73 kilo category, uh, the first of the bronze medal contest, Alexandru Raiku of Romania goes up against Somon Mahmadbekov of Tajikistan. And in the second of the bronze medal contest, it'll be Hidayat Hidarov of Azerbaijan up against Kilom Chain <laughs> of France. Again, a chance for the French to take medals, yes. but it's really in the final that the French are going to be looking to because Harada Kenshi of Japan has to face the French uh, home homeboy Teo <laughs> Rican. We'll see how that one goes. Absolutely. Yes, looking forward to it. Right. Uh, there are going to be any number of presentations and um, a show and all sorts of, of stuff coming up. We may be able to get to show you uh, some of that. But for the time being, from Annette Berm and myself, we're going to take a break because five o'clock yes. is the allotted time for the uh, broadcast. It's 20 to four now, so we look forward to your company again at five o'clock. But from Annette Berm and myself, it's bye-bye for now. <laughs>